big time. You. You. And you. What you playing for tonight? A gold-plated trophy? The bling of a ring? Your place in the game? A plaque in the hall? So they'll recall what you were. What you are. Big time. Yeah, you. Chew on this, big time. You've seen it all. Big hit. No hit. A glove to make him gas. The roar you hear is real. On their feet for you. You gotta be cool. Calm. Phenomenal. You have before, or you wouldn't be here. You got a shot to win it all. It's on you, big time. Game six, the World Series on Fox. Welcome to the 2022 World Series on Fox, presented by Capital One. Game six about to begin. We go to the field with Tom Verducci. Thanks, Joe. Game six, two words that capture the patience, perseverance, and heartbreak of Dusty Baker. In 2002, his Giants had a 5-0 lead in the seventh inning, ready to capture the World Series, and lost. The next year, his Cubs, trying to win the NL pennant, had a 3-0 lead in the eighth inning, and lost. Last year, his Astros, against the Braves in the World Series, eliminated. Dusty Baker is a man of faith. He's an avid fisherman, a music enthusiast, but has been defined too much by what's missing. No man has managed more games without winning the World Series. Tonight, his 25-year journey brings him back to a Game 6. A chance to change history, a chance to make history. Joe. Tommy mentioned he's a big fisherman, and he said, you try to get that fish into the boat. Those are the toughest moments. Taking the last breath out of anybody is so tough. And so he knows the job is far from finished. But he feels like he's got the right man for the job. Framber Valdez, who started game two, on the mound here for game six. And what a difference a year makes for the youngster. Two games in the World Series last year, he said the emotions got the best of him. He failed to make it through the third inning in either of those starts against Atlanta. But then game two of the World Series against the Phillies, pitched into the seventh inning and dominated that game, just the one run. He's faced them twice over the last month. And, John, he struck out 19 over 11-plus innings. Yeah, this guy's turning into a bulldog, and he has a tremendous sinker, a lot of ground balls, but he has great balance, and really he's learned to have a great heartbeat on the mound. And if you're a game watcher or film watcher, you're going to want to do the same thing he did against the Phillies to have that success. Don't change a thing. Lineup that'll face off with here in game six will look like this. With Kyle Schwarber to lead it off, and then Hoskins and Real Muto, Harper, Castellanos, and Bohm. Gene Segura is the seven hitter in second baseman, and with the lefty on the mound, they do go with Beerling and Sosa instead of Marsh and Stott. The interesting thing is his last game we were talking about, it was his highest velocity he's had all year. So that RPM was revved up. Now you can imagine in a game six, this is where it starts getting the reality starts getting close to. You cannot think about that if you're a game six starter up 3-2. Hard not to, especially when you know team is one way a win from winter world series and you've been on both sides of this both facing elimination and with a chance to clinch what's the difference emotionally well emotionally when you're having an elimination game like let's say wheeler your room for error is low your leash is quick and you just want to pass the baton on to the guy waiting for game seven if you're this is if you're valdez this is when you get selfish and say i don't want anyone else to pitch after this game <laughs> and you take it in your own hands in game two going six and a third and he faces Kyle Schwarber to get game six started and normally I'd say see how the game's going if you're Kyle Schwarber but the way that he was pitched to last time got a lot of fastballs early I would say like he did against Verlander it was the second pitch but Schwarber should be ready to hit a fastball in this at bat early in the first two pitches Astros one went away from their second World Series in six years the Phillies trying to force game seven and the man that started 
Game five of the home run stands in. Valdez rocks and fires, and off we go with ball one. And immediately, John, you see the home plate umpire Lance Barksdale not giving Framber Valdez a low strike, a pitch that he needs, and Barksdale typically does not give pitchers many low strikes. Right, and what Valdez is going to have to do is just keep the pressure on low in the zone. That's uh, pop back in on a play one on one. Well, this is what he did last time. He faced him uh, leading off the game and, and he attacked him with some fastballs. And then later in the game, he's going to miss it, mix it up. But he pitches off the extreme, I say an extreme third base side of the rubber. His toe is barely touching that rubber when he's getting. That's what the angle he wants to create for the movement. I mean, that's the bare minimum right there. That shows you the balance he has. 28-year-old delivers one oh, pitch. Oh, That's yeah. taken low. A check swing, but he went around, and it's one and two. Hmm. A lot of movement, but maybe the barrel stayed behind the plate. On a one-two pitch, Schwarber oh, takes. Oh, he was headed back to the dugout thinking it was strike three. I think everybody thought it was strike three besides the one guy whose opinion matters, Lance Barksdale. Wow. <laughs> I mean, this is this is this is a two-step. Not a song. This is not a song, but this is he's like, okay, all right. He better swing, I think, on this next pitch yeah. if it's close. All right, so a gift for Schwarber. Can he take advantage? On 2-2. Two, two. That's ball three. And that is the first curveball from Fiber Valdez. Only 12 of the 42 curveballs he threw in game two were in the strike zone, but the Phillies chased half of them. Yeah, they did, and that's that's how good it is, and that just speaks to him. And he's got to shake that off. He can't let this affect him. Here's his payoff. And he winds up walking shorter. So perhaps a key call in the first plate appearance of the game, and instead of a strikeout, it's a walk. Well, uh, and I know a pitcher is going to get frustrated because your mind knows that's a strike and you put it to bed already. And he wasn't able to really. He made some good pitches. All right, now that's strike three, but you got to make a couple good ones. He let that one out of the zone, and then this one inside. But you cannot let this snowball into a big inning. And this is where experience will pay off of having gone through certain things before and that is where from Valdez says the biggest growth has been his ability to move on from things that don't go his way he immediately deuces a bouncing ball to get the out of second and they turn two from Valdez needs just one pitch to erase it and it was a good pitch because you knew that Hoskins wanted to get something going he has been really struggling at the plate, and he throws him a good sinker, and all he can do with a good sinker is bounce it to a defense that's outstanding, and that's an outstanding double play. They've been tracking ground ball rates for 35 years. Framber Valdez has the highest ground ball rate for a starting pitcher since they've been tracking those things. The Phillies in game two only hit three balls in the air. And so a lineup that's relied on home runs for a lot of the season, they're facing the guy that limits them better than anybody in the sport. Yeah. Well, this last at bat that JT had in his last game, they're hoping that that translates into a more typical at bat. Oh. Well, you were talking about it. He needs to go the other way, and he did, and almost helped them come back in that game. That click of the bat, sometimes the sound, the feeling, can get a hitter going, but it's the approach. That'll get him going, and that last at bat was really good. And the issues you're talking about, Rio Muto's one for his last 17 with 11 Ks. And again, we talked till I mean, this guy, you got to believe that catching every game and just the, the battle he's been through has affected him a little bit offensively. Something has to give. He was the hero in game one here. Tied the game with a double, won it with a homer. On a 1 1 from Framber Valdez, Real Muto shoots it down the line. Foul 1 and 2. 97 from Valdez. Yeah, he, again, this will be the game that he has 
Extra day rest, right? I mean, he's ready to go. His sinker's good. The touch is there. He passed the first test of a tough at bat to lead off the game. Got a double play ball, but he is juiced up, no doubt. Home of the one two. reason we talked about in the open and why it's so important for two and three of the Phillies because they got to get on for that guy there hasn't been a lot of action for him and the and the Astros have pitched him perfectly but the reason they can do that is no nobody got in front of him for the most part well the Phillies had seven runs in game three the game where they tied a World Series record hitting five homers but just two runs in two games since On a 2-2 pitch, Real Muto takes ball three, and actually that hit him, and he's on. And so they do get somebody on in front of Bryce Harper. Well, this will be interesting with two outs. Uh, they faced each other, obviously, in game two, and you see the curveball that catches the top of his foot. When he faced Harper, he threw him a lot of fastballs early, and got him out with curveballs late. So will Bryce be ready for a fastball on this first pitch if that's the same game plan? He's hitting 373 this postseason. The only game during this postseason run Harper didn't reach base was the one against Valdez. First pitch. Got a fastball. Grounded in right side. Sliding play. Jeremy Pena. What a postseason run this kid's having. Goal is top of the first from Faber Valdez. Buzz Ken Rosenthal reported off of the top. Yuli Gurriel is not in the game. He injured his knee in game five. So Trey Mancini starts at first base. Christian Vasquez catches. It's the first time all year the Dusty Baker has sent this lineup out there. And he does so with the Astros looking to clinch a world championship against the guy they saw in game two in Zach Wheeler. This guy, John, was overpowering. And a big part of the reason the Phillies made it to the World Series. But in his World Series debut, wasn't the same. Yeah, he wasn't the same. He had ran into a little bit of uh, tough luck, too, when you talk about ambush early. And that really set the stage for the game, and he never really was able to recover, and his team didn't really score. So look for him to make some adjustments early. I, I still, he went fastball in to Altuve. I would not throw a first pitch fastball in, that's for sure. Yeah, that'd be a good place to start. Yeah. And you're going to be taking a look at the velocity. 97-98 is where Zach Wheeler wants to be. He was at a season low. 95 in game two. Here's the guy you're talking about that was the first to ambush. El Tuve doubled on the first pitch of the game and came in to score one pitch later. Ball one at 98. Extra day rest and his ability to look at film and see his mechanical adjustments he needs to make. Jose Altuve hitting 346 over his last five games. Watches the strike, 99, and it's one and one. And Altuve to you looks like he's back to being himself. So. Yeah, he's hit some mistakes, which has gotten him going. Uh, but if you stay outside, you got to make him still beat you to right field. If you're any pitcher in the game today, beat, make him beat you to right field. One and two, nice looking breaker. I would think the breaking ball comes out a little earlier than normal for Wheeler. He likes to put that in his back pocket and show it later, but right now he's pitching every inning as if it's his last inning because they're in elimination game, and he knows it and wants to go as deep as he can without his manager taking him out. Home of the one-two pitch. Fastball at 98 and a good sign for Wheeler and the Phillies with that fastball up in the high 90s again. So one gone in this first inning. Here comes a splendid rookie, Jeremy Pena, who continued his fantastic World Series with a nice defensive play to finish the top of the inning. I mean, that's a great play. If Altuve has to make that, he's not going to throw out Harper. And his short hop right in the grass, no big deal, makes the play and got his team to the plate. Coming off a three-hit game in Game 5. Where he hit his fourth home run of the postseason. He's hitting 381 in the World Series. And he's making a push to become the first rookie position player ever to win World Series MVP. He's having a fantastic 
adjustment. I call it in bat adjustment, meaning look bad for two pitches and then with two strikes, slow everything down. Bounces this one to short, Edmundo Sosa. Well, we're going to see two pitchers that pitch differently in the sense of not only their repertoire, but where they stand on the rubber. We talked about Valdez, farthest part of the third base rubber. Well, you've got Wheeler on the first base side of the rubber, but here's the difference. They're going to land close to each other because Wheeler throws across his body, which creates that extra spin and hop to the hitter. So even though Valdez pitches over there, they get close to where they land on opposite sides of the rubber. Across his body and Anya with that 6-5 frame. Uh, that's the that's we talked about how he goes downhill and so far the fastball is not skipping a beat. That's for sure. A couple of big dudes facing off here. You're Don Alvarez with the bases empty and two gone. Starts the first one left center field slicing to Kyle Schwarber. He's got it. And on seven pitches, Zach Wheeler with a one, two, three first. Sponsored by Dell Technologies will stop at nothing to bring out the innovator in all. And by Capital One, what's in your wallet? A game six has been a special one in the World Series. 1975, Carlton Fisk in the bottom of the 12th, willing his ball fair. One of the iconic home runs in World Series history. Second inning, no score. Nick Castellanos leads off against Framber Valdez. He's a double play ball. To Get around the leadoff walk in the first inning, and he's in the dirt with a curve to Castellanos. Well, so far, it's been a decent approach by the Phillies, meaning Valdez has thrown now five curveballs, none for strikes. Rarely do you get back to back takes from this one. Yeah, that remains the case. And so when you see those numbers, John, that he rarely is in the zone with his curveball. It feels like the plan, and it's easier in principle than it is in practice, but it should be, don't swing when you see spin. Yeah, but the beauty, you're right, but the beauty of his curveball, it's in the zone a long time, even though it ends up out of the zone. It'd be one thing if he spiked a lot of them and they just were so aggressive swingers. Three straight curves, one and two, and the last two have been in the strike zone. He just has such great feel, and the way that he throws, you know, he's the short striding, kind of over the top. Great feel for pitching. And he just puts the hitter in a defensive defensive spot because there's nothing mediocre about his pitches that you could sit on. Home of the one two. It's four straight curves. Castellanos bounces that one just foul. And he was going to reach had that been fair. That's about as close of a last second call you can make for the third base umpire to see this ball last second. He's got hook spins, fair right now, fair right now, fair, and then foul right before the bag. Good call. Whew, that's close. <laughs> yeah. Then I was showing you with conviction. Yeah, and you're getting blocked out by Bregman, so great call there. Really, it's been, been a great postseason for the most part. Mm -hmm. Nothing really, the umpires are all doing their job. It's a tough job. Nothing really super conf confrontational. Another one two pitch. A fastball, and he gets the call down there at the bottom of the zone. One gone in the second on his first K. Let's take a look at the Astros defense here for game six. How about the play Chaz McCormick made in game five in Philadelphia? Flanked by Alvarez and Tucker. Bregman and Pena left side of the infield with Altuve and Mancini for Trey Mancini his first start at first base since October 5th He hadn't played first base period since October 5th when he came off of the bench for Gurriel in game five and Made that great play to keep the Astros in front One away Alec Bone. Line drive base hit First hit of the game for the Phillies and it comes from Alec Bohm with one away in the second. Well, he got a fastball and it was down and he went down with it right up the middle. And that's the approach you got to have. Easier to said than done when you come up with game plans on paper, executing them totally differently. 
A man aboard for Gene Segura who takes a strike and the Phillies are hoping that his two hit performance in game five is a sign of things to come. He was one for his previous 17. He's been struggling against fastballs. Got both those hits in game five against Teeters. One to one. Good stop Maldonado. The Astros a win away from the second World Series with the recent cautionary tale of 2019 when they're in the same position. Came back home with a 3-2 lead over the Nationals and the Nats took game six and seven. One and two. And the Phillies really have built their whole identity on coming back within the season from eight games below 500 to reach the postseason within games I mean this postseason's dotted with comebacks most recently game one of the World Series from down five nothing and now within a series down three two facing elimination Can the fight and fills do it one more time Valdez to Segura with a 1-2. It's a late swing to send that one foul. We're talking about this umpiring crew. It's done a nice job in this World Series. Lance Barksdale gets home plate today with crew chief Dan Isonia now down at third. The Phillies order trying to get it done here. Runner at first, one gone, one two pitch. Segura falls off a curve. Segura, as we talked about, it's just so short and quick to the ball. Doesn't look like it's something you would teach most hitters, but man, does he get it done and he can find the barrel and get a lot of base hits. In a lot of ways, he's kind of embodied these Phillies this year. Flawed, but fun, and more and more, and you add it all up, the good outweighs the bad when it comes to Gene Segura and with this Phil's team this year. It's a guy that's been traded four times. Finally found himself on a postseason team here in his 11th year. Home at first one gone, no score, second inning. A one-two pitch again, and it's in the dirt for ball two. That side of the plate really pulling his breaking ball, and we've seen already hit batsmen on the foot. And we've seen a lot of them missed in that area. He also has the capability of backdooring that pitch when he's completely connected to it. And of course he can throw that slider, a little firmer pitch. If he feels like they're laying off the big breaker, and he has loved that big breaker, that curveball this postseason. More than 40% of his pitches have been the curve. Here's another 2 2. It is 3 3 as the curveball falls from the heavens to get Segura. That's exactly what I was talking about the backdoor variety. Even though that caught the middle of the plate, it started out and up. And when it comes out of your hand right there, the hitter's saying, that's a ball. There's no way that's coming back down. Too late to pull the trigger. And he can get those calls when he when he's spinning it and not spiking it. He's going to get a lot of strikes and strikeouts. More strikeouts on that curveball than any curveball in baseball this year. Two outs, second inning, Matt Veerling. Playing time in the postseason has been hard to come by. He starts against left-handed pitchers. He's gone two for 12. One and oh. Fearling, 26 years old, out of St. Louis. 
Debuted late last season, performed well. This is his first full year in the major leagues and really got it going down the stretch. On a 1 0 from Valdez. Feeling oh, takes oh. ball two. first 2-0 to the plate low for ball three from the Valdez who has started three games this postseason the Astros have won all three at a 142 ERA very few moments where he's been at all out of sync left hander in his fifth year has gotten better and better and he misses ball four Four pitch walk to the eight hitter Veerling, second walk issued by Valdez. Well, it's been an incredible series, and you still have a chance to win 25 grand of Big Poppy's money tonight. All you need to do is pull out your phone, get the free Super 6 app now, and then enter your six picks for tonight's game. Bell puts him at first and second for the Phillies, and John, they, throughout this postseason run, have been really good with runners in scoring position until late, where they've gone one for their last 23. Yeah, they've hit a dry spot at the wrong time, and Valdez facing Sosa the last time threw him a ton of breaking balls. I mean, almost every pitch, with the exception of three, were curveballs. So see if he stays with that same plan. Sosa, bigger, longer swing. And if he gets a curveball up in the zone, that's the one he can do the damage. Bowman second, Veerling in first. Only the fourth start of the postseason for Edmundo Sosa. Got a first pitch fastball and fouled it off. Well, there was some thought early on in this World Series that against a lefty, against Valdez, Bryson Stott was going to play. But since then, Stott's gone 0 for 13 during the World Series, and so Rob Thompson does what he's done the rest of the postseason, and that is go for the platoon advantage here. 0-1. A breaking ball is golfed to left center field. Alvarez back onto the track at the wall. He's got it. The park just large enough to hold it. Sky scraping drive from Edmundo Sosa. It falls harmlessly into the glove of Alvarez. Middle two in game six. No score. Sosa's thinking, man, if I steer that one about 15 feet to the left, I got a bomb in the World Series. But instead, it stays nothing, nothing. And Alex Breckman leads off against Zach Wheeler, who continues where he was at in the first inning with that fastball up 98-99. Yeah, good fast fo four seam life. He's gone into Bregman a few times in the previous meetings. Goes in here. Bounce to Sosa. And he's retired the first four. Well, Sosa got the curveball that I was talking about, and it looked like for a minute this collective crowd held their breath as the big left fielder put the ball in his glove, and that was close to a huge moment in this game. He's watching his play right now. Yes, yeah. <laughs> got back there pretty calmly, looking pretty smooth, whatnot. The one gone in the second inning, Kyle Tucker. This is the guy, if I'm Wheeler, throughout the game, I don't mess with runners on. I mean, this is the guy you got to pitch around in the lineup. Oh, he shows the bunt and pops it back out of play. The reason I'm saying that, even though Vasquez is behind him, the bottom part of this lineup right now, beyond Tucker, 
Anything you get out of them based on their performances so far would be a bonus. So an elite pitcher is going to look at that scorecard and go, okay, this is not a disrespect to them. I'm circling these guys because that's where I need to go to get outs if I get into a jam. Tucker, who hit two home runs in the first game of this World Series, has struggled since. The All-Star takes inside, and it's one and one. And the Astros, as a team, have hit just enough, and it's kind of been what the story's been all season for. Elite pitching and enough offense. They've scored 18 runs in the five games and lead the series three games to two. <coughs> Perfect, one and two. And when he's doing that, there's not a, a hitter in the universe that's going to be able to hit that pitch. And you've already seen what adrenaline and knowing that this is your last start of the year will do for you. The velocity's back to where it was before. Commanding it as well. On one, two. This is up and away. And the other thing is he's actually throwing it because he trusted it so little in game two that... He threw it less than he has in his three years with Philly. Right, exactly. And you just saw one of the few times he gets underneath the ball. When you get underneath the ball, you throw an upshoot fastball that's a non-competitive pitch. You can still throw it up and stay on top of the ball. Is 2-2. Uh -huh. swing foul. Another 2-2 from Zach Wheeler. Is yanked down the line, hooking foul. Now Zach was trying to get that to the back foot, and that breaking ball was a little late and a little flat. And he's lucky that uh, Tucker pulled it foul. But this breaking ball is supposed to be down. See how it rolled in the strike zone, and that long, majestic swing of Tucker hooked it foul. So it stays two and two on Tucker. Zach Wheeler rocks and fires. Oh, that's it. Try to come to the back door and miss. And he tried to he tried to throw a backdoor cutter and catch the outside part of the plate. You see on the side of the ball, if that thing breaks a little bit more, it's got a chance to get the called strikeout. Well, the guy you said you would circle in the lineup is really making him work. This would be the eighth pitch to Kyle Tucker. It's a 3-2, and it's a fastball that's hit foul. All these fastballs. This is who Zach Wheeler is. His identity is power pitcher. And that's what he was over the first four games of the postseason when he struck out 25, walked only three. Trying to find it again when his team needs him most. Nine pitches to the first four hitters, his ninth to Tucker alone. It'll be a tenth. Tucker's battling. The one thing he does is he does a lot of movement in the box for his timing. We're going to see it's almost as if he doesn't have traction with his spikes and he's trying to get traction, but he's always moving the back foot and really rocking until he gets ready to hit. I'll get a chance to see it a little bit. Oh, I don't got a good. No, no, that's not. No, <laughs> wait. And then right about now he'll get ready. He's like a horse ready to take <laughs> off. On the 10th pitch, Tucker awesome. takes ball four. Impressive stuff from Kyle Tucker and the first base runner of the game for Houston. Well, that was a pretty locked in at bat once he got the two strikes. This pitch should have been swung at. And if you're Wheeler, you're going, I just painted a slider cutter inside half. And the guy who swings a lot should have gotten it. But now we're going to work the bottom of the lineup and see if he can work through that.
And the DH today, Christian Vasquez with the Ledmus Diaz at one for 22 in the postseason overall. And David Hensley, not a good matchup against Zach Wheeler. We've already got Mancini in the lineup filling in for Guriel. It's the second catcher Vasquez who does the DH here. Now, the one thing Vasquez, he, he had a few years ago his power stroke where he hit a lot of home runs. He's still got that, but he tracks the breaking ball pretty well, especially down. You would think that would be the kryptonite to a lot of right-handed hitters, but you got to be careful with that breaking ball. you got to really, if you, if you hit it well low, that means you can swing over the top when it bounces. Tucker aboard with one away. First one to Vasquez. Oh, oh, he swings at a ball. It might have hit him if he didn't. That fastball, angry movement inside for strike one. Uh, you're not going to see too many guys follow a pitch off right here. Watch this. Could have got the belt buckle. No, it got the inside part. But I'm saying that ball almost could have hit him had he not swing. Right at him. Wow. Get off me, ball. Most of his strikeouts are going to be inner half, inner third. That's where he's going on the first pitch. <coughs> oh, and two. Christian Vasquez has only started two games in this postseason, but in one of them, he knocked in two. In another, he caught a no-hitter in the World Series. Looking to make the most of another start here. Tucker at first has good wheels, good base stealer. It's got to be a high fastball. Oh, it's a low fastball. Grounded to short. Six, four, three. And a double play finishes off the second. Zach Wheeler has faced the minimum through two in game six. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Taco Bell. Steal a base, steal a taco is back. And by Corona Extra. Find the fine life. Live La Vida Mas Fina. Game six and 86. It gets through Buckner. The Mets win it. And win game seven to keep the Red Sox drought going. Kyle Schwarber to the plate. We go to the field with Ken Rosenthal. Well, guys, we've talked a lot about Kyle Schwarber's leadership. He and David Robertson, most postseason experience on the Phillies. They both spoke briefly to the team after game five, saying, guys, it's not supposed to be easy. Play our game one pitch at a time. Yeah, and this is the guy here in Schwarber County who's been in this exact situation of four before, of course, with the Cubs in 2016. They were down 3-1. And then eventually down 3-2 on the road for game six and seven. And they went in there to Cleveland, and we all know how that went. And so passing on that experience. Walked his first time against Valdez, who has issued two of those and hit a batter. Schwarber oh. takes ball two. There's statements you always hear in the postseason that drive me crazy because they're not as they sound good, but they don't live up to their. Ah, we got nothing to lose. The pressure's on them. Our backs against the wall. Blah blah blah. That's BS. Any team that feels that way usually doesn't come out on top. And on the flip side, you got two games at home to win one. Nah, you really have one game at home to win one because if you go to a game seven, anything can happen. So if I'm the Phillies, that's what I'm saying. Force a game seven, their advantage is gone. And that's why when you're up 3-2, how why this Dusty Baker talked about how hard it is to close the teams out for that simple reason. Because you do feel like, oh, give us two games to win one. We're good in the regular season, yeah. But in the postseason, it's so much different. 2-1 pitch, Schwarber takes right two. The last time John did the home team lost game six and then won game seven. 25 years ago. Yeah. 1997 Marlins against the Indians. First year manager Rob Thompson has gotten him this far. Schwarber starts the third. And Quickly. takes right through. That almost looked like Schwarber was looking for another pitch, didn't get it in the guessing game, and just got completely froze by the pitch on the outside 
Going into this inning, Valdez had not thrown any four seamers or changeups. Look for that to change a little bit as far as that changeup coming into play as the game plays on. And now back into that part of the order that you've pointed out, the Phillies have to have to have a shot. Strikeout Hoskins. Yeah, they, they've got to do anything. Walk, hit batsmen like Rio Muto was able to do. But th this part of the lineup is supposed to be the meat, and the offense clicks through Harper. Watch out. No swing, one on one. But when your two most reliable right handed hitters are slumped, something gets them going. A bloop, a crack, a crack bat, an infield hit. One ball, one strike. Reese Hoskins takes a curve low, and the Phillies can at least take some comfort or some hope out of the idea that Reese Hoskins' best games this postseason have come after his worst. And he's coming off an 0-for-5 game with four strikeouts. For a defensive play, cost him a run. But you look back at the division series, there's a defensive play that cost him a run in a loss in Atlanta. He comes back and hits a three-run home run. Championship series has another three-strikeout game. Only to follow that with three home runs over the next 48 hours. And pick himself up again. He's worked it full here. He's worked it full, but this is going to be a key. If he expands the strike zone here on 3-2, he's still got to stay disciplined. If you're Valdez, you think he's going to swing. You can throw anything you want if you think he's going to swing. It's a fastball. It's bounced to third, but it's just foul. It's the second one, John. We've had right down there on that line. Another one down the line, almost identical. Wow. And th that one, I mean, that is like a eighth of an inch. It's like a credit card. Yeah, and I have Sonya right on both. So Reese Hoskins will set it back in for another 3 2 pitch. No score in the third inning of game six. Phillies trying to force game seven. Astros will win away. Valdez turns and deals. Hoskins watches strike three. Curveball falls in there to get him. Tremendous break from top to bottom and if you're sitting at home, you have no idea how hard this pitch is To make up your mind thinking that's got to be a ball I'm not going to expand the zone and then it drops in for a strike and That's what makes him so tough and that's why he keeps the ball in the ballpark by the way If you're sitting on that pitch, it's a different thing like hey, I'm gonna sit on a curveball You see that you might be able to hit it Curve misses to Real Muto last time from Valdez gave up a home run in this ballpark which July 3rd that's amazing. Only 11 of them all year in 200 innings. One and one. For a guy who didn't get a pro contract until five years after he was eligible to get one in the Dominican Republic. From an anonymous prospect to an intriguing one with that curveball. Debuted when he was 24. In the first couple of years, though, wasn't like he showed up and was dealing. He had an ERA above five his first two years. He was back and forth between the big leagues and AAA. Didn't become a full-time starter until 2020. And now in his third year, all-star for the first time. Keeping their hopes up here in the World Series. His 2-1 pitch is a fastball for strike two, and that is played up over the first few innings. It's just amazing because he, he doesn't look like he could possibly throw 97 as effortless as he makes it look, and it's just on the hitter, and the hitter is trying to get a mistake. He didn't have many tonight so far. Two-two strikes out the side. 
got the cheesesteaks in one city. You got the Tex-Mex here in Houston, where we go to the bottom of the third in game six. It is Trey Mancini to lead off. Bottom of the order for the Astros against Zach Wheeler. Dusty Baker's message to Mancini, go be aggressive. He is strike one. Aggressive with fastball at 99. Hey, well, we get a chance. I want to give a shout out to Braden Scott. He's dealing with some tough stuff. Young boy diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma. Originally from Houston, big baseball fan. We're pulling for you and praying for you, young man. No one pitch to Mancini is bounce foul. He's got a great guy to look up to here for Absolutely. inspiration and Mancini. Who Absolutely. Is two years removed from beating stage three colon cancer and playing in the World Series. His whole focus was on beating cancer. He wasn't thinking about getting back to playing baseball, but he beat it. He got back and he's doing what he says it still doesn't feel real at this point. In a tough spot here against Wheeler, starting the third. Here's an 0-2. A good take. That's where he's been really vulnerable and aggressive. So that's a good take. And if he can stay stubborn on two of those, because you can back that right back up if you're Wheeler, just to tease him even more to say, okay, you took that one, but can you take the next one? Outside with a fastball. One strikeout, one walk, no hits against Zach Wheeler so far. Deals 2-2. Cracks his bat, that's foul. Mancini's still alive, but the bat's not. He'll go get a new one. As he goes and gets a new piece of lumber. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Geico. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. Seeing a lot of big time baseball in this ballpark in recent years. Fourth trip to the World Series in six years. Trying to win it all for the first time since 2017. Mancini's got a new bat, waits on this 2 2. Fastball, shot to right base hit. Trey Mancini with his first hit of the postseason to open the third. It snaps in 0 for 18 and understandably brings a big smile to his face. Yeah, I'm really surprised Wheeler, after throwing the one breaking ball, didn't go back to another breaking ball. And that fastball, he was able to get to it and at least hit it the other way. So an already bonus for the Houston bottom of the lineup. And Wheeler maybe wishing he had gone back to the breaking ball. Sigh of relief for Trey Mancini. Only in the lineup because Yuli Gurriel is out with the injury. And he's the first man to get a hit against Zach Wheeler. Now Chaz McCormick takes ball one. And McCormick, one of the heroes of game five with a defensive play that not many people had any business making. McCormick happens to be at his best going back into his left and that's where he had to go to make the catch of his life Robbing JT Real Muto of extra bases in the ninth inning well, He too likes the fastball down and He broke his bat as well and so McCormick in the ninth inning, he set off of the bat. He thought this ball was gone. He got to the wall in time to time that jump up, laid there on the ground for a moment, and he said he looked up at Phillies fans and saw their faces, and he flashed back to when he says he was one of them as a 13-year-old when the Phillies lost the World Series to the Yankees. And one of the fans that was sitting there looking back at him got this picture of uh, the imprint on the dirt. How cool is that shot? Really cool. And if you're the Astros, you're hoping the same result happens here. One broken bat by Mancini. He got a new one. It was rewarded. Broken bat here by McCormick. Maybe the new one will do better. And McCormick said as he's laying there after that catch, he says it felt like a dream. Felt like forever that he was laying there before he got up. Soaking it all in. The city that he's from. With that new bat, swings and misses. And we go down to Tom Verducci. 
Yeah, I talked to Chaz about that picture you just saw of his dirt angel, if you will, on the warning track. He couldn't believe how clear it was and actually said, I'm not even sure if that is real, but he said, if we win tonight, I am framing that and putting it on the wall. It looks like something out of a museum. Yeah. Chaz Chop, they've started doing here the last couple of years. They love Chaz McCormick, who leaves the fastball upstairs and the count evens two and two. Debuted last season, a platoon player for the better part of his two years in the major leagues. That at one point this summer was getting sent down to AAA. They called him back because of an injury. And he has seized center field here in this postseason run. On a 2-2 from Zach Wheeler, he takes ball three. Zach now has to make his first pitch of the game because if he were to get two runners on in the bottom part of the lineup, that brings up the meat of the order coming up. And the recipe for Houston's been pretty simple the last two games. So the top five guys have really delivered offensively. That's why this part of the lineup, Zach has to go through and can't create a lot of traffic for Altuve. Mancini single. Now McCormick on 3-2. Breaks his bat on a roller back to Wheeler. Out at second. Safe at first. The degree of difficulty for Zach Wheeler right here is pretty incredible. This bat, if we're not mistaken, went right over his head. So survive and then make the play. Oh, the bat goes right over your head. He has the presence to pick it up. You can understand the throw is not perfect because he's got a bat flying over his head. Jeez. And he's able to make that play. Great pitch, great concentration, and almost doubled up a really fast runner. He's going to have enough uh, wood for a bonfire here soon. He's broken oh, three bats in these uh, two last at bats. So he does get the first out. Now the nine hitter, Maldonado. Now Maldonado has twice been able to have a hit and run slash base hit to right field when a runner's been on first in motion. Strike one. 36-year-old in his 12th season, looking for his first ring. McCormick off first as the 0-1 comes home from Wheeler. Maldonado oh. takes inside one and one. You can see Wheeler really trying to get inside to most of these hitters. That's where he likes to throw his seam, two seamer. He's got great action in there, and that is why we're seeing some broken bats as well. You love that as a pitcher. You break somebody in, kind of like an empowering oh, feeling. There's nothing better other than double play, but he almost got both at the same time. Top of the order looms as he fires a 1 1 pitch. Bounce gently. Alec Bohm's got a hurry. Just in time, and he can thank his lucky stars that the catcher was running. Yeah, I'll say that is understandable from Maldonado, who's squatting behind the plate, and then you're asking him to beat out an infield hit. Good credit to Bohm. He took his time, didn't really have to feel like there was a panic, bare hand throw and get him out. Just barely got him out. All right, so runner in scoring position for Jose Altuve. And John, one of the more stunning stats of this postseason is that even as Altuve has gotten it going lately, he still does not have an RBI. Now, part of that was when he was going bad, expanding the zone and swinging at bad pitches. When you have runner in scoring position, typically the pitcher feels the stress and might make a mistake and you take advantage of it. One ball, no strikes. Well, Tuve struck out his first time. After starting this postseason one for 28, he's hitting 346 over his last five. Longest tenured Astro, the face of this great run. Trying to put him in front in game six. He's ahead 2-0.
uphill with those fastballs two in a row now on this 2 0 pitch for me uh, Altuve would have to hit a breaking ball here. I can't afford to come in the zone with a guy who loves the swing and rarely takes two pitches in a bat in a row yet alone two. So see if Wheeler tries to spin something on the outside part of the plate with a base open. Your antenna going up with those back to back takes. And now on 2 0, it's pinpoint and strike one in three straight takes from LT. Yeah, and that was pinpoint. And he made an absolute perfect fastball on the outside part of the plate. A little cutting action on this one. McCormick is second, two gone, third inning. 2 1 pitch. El Tuve. Strike two. <laughs> All fastballs, two and two on Altuve. And you'll notice the last couple pitches, JT started out in and then moved away. See that? That's in case the runner's given location. So you kind of deke the location. The pitcher knows where it's going to be. And at the last second, the catcher gets to the desired spot. And two great pitches down in the count, 2-0 now even. Scoreless game here on thin ice with a two-out chance for Altuve. Fouls it off as Wheeler sticks with the hard stuff against one of the best in the game at hitting fastballs. Now we talked about that lack of four seam fastballs the first time at 14 percent this are already at 42 percent meaning that's he's thrown this four seam he feels like he's got it back it's all he's thrown out to he strikes him out sticks with the fastball and ends the third zach wheeler three scoreless innings in game six bryce harper due to lead off the fourth Get your game on at MLBShop.com. Authentic on-field caps, tees, hoodies, and more. All your postseason Astros and Phillies gear at the official source, MLBShop.com. Part of the order for the Phillies, no score. The fourth, Bryce Harper leads off. First pitch curve, strike one. And from a game planning standpoint, of course, before the series, they, looked, they said, look, Harper's the hottest guy in the universe. We've got to take care of him. They, for the most part, have. Going into this game, 14 out of 21, we mentioned, he came to the plate with nobody on. Now, that, that might not seem like that much. That's a ton when you're talking about the fourth hitter in a lineup. That looks a little bit high, and we go down to Tom Verducci. Yeah, you might have noticed between each pitch, the setup routine for Bryce Harper, always the same. Touching the ground there. He started this, he told me, last year after he was hit in the face by Hennis Carrera of the Cardinals on a 98-mile-an-hour fastball. It's a little meditative moment to get in touch with the ground and quiet himself. On a 1-1, one -one, these are buckled. One and two. All spin so far from Valdez this time up. And that MVP of last year was that much more impressive when you yeah. consider that he had that happen a month into the season. He didn't just overcome the fear that he must have felt. He came back better than ever. On a one-two pitch, Harper gets another breaker and takes it. Ball two. Now, if Valdez wants to, he have, we haven't seen many four-seamers, but to climb the ladder up with two strikes wouldn't be the worst pitch in the world after Harper's seen so many slow pitches and that internal radar gun that hitters have with their eyes this pitch at 96 or 97 would look like 101 yeah there's not so many times in this postseason where he's seen this many non fastballs at any point 75 percent of the pitches that he's seen in this World Series have been fastballs On a 2-2, Harper swings and misses. It was a fastball, and it was in on him. And strikeout number six for Framber Valdez, including his fourth in a row. Yeah, it's just so nasty after seeing breaking ball, breaking ball, breaking ball, and then he heats him up. Two-seamer and eats him up. Look at the movement. It's right down the middle, and it ended up being a ball, and Harper tried to get it before it got him, and no luck. 
That is now 25 Ks for Framber Valdez in 15 innings against the Phillies over the last month. Strike on Castellanos. You figure that the more times you see a guy, yeah. the more information you've gathered, the more comfortable you're going to be, but so far, more the same. I mean, he's locked in. I mean, and what could have gotten him off the tracks, really, seriously, in that first batter from Kyle Schwarber after a walk last year, maybe he wouldn't have reacted the way he reacted this year. 0 oh 2. So much better mentally. All that work with the sports psychology staff, a lot of encouragement from his manager. This is one of the most important moments of his career. It was one of the first conversations he had with Dusty Baker when he was still trying to break in. And Dusty said, Hey, you got a chance to be a big time pitcher for us. I believe in you. Now you got to believe in you. His 0 2. Drag left side and foul. Well, the disparity between his slowest pitch and fastest pitch is pretty dramatic. Because, as I talked about, each hitter kind of gauges in timing. They have their own timing mechanism. And when they think they've got something timed and it's by them, that is a. That messes with your mind. It starts becoming a little defeated when you think I had that time, but I had no chance. And he's messing with all the hitters' timing in a very important game. 0 oh, 2 to Castellanos. Back foot misses. 1 and 2. He had 97. We showed a moment ago is the hardest pitch that he's thrown this year. He normally averages 94. And it's a lot of separation right there. Yeah. 78 to 94. But with the movement, he's got the velocity today, too. Shakes a few times and step off. Well, 19 miles. That's the spread between fastball and the slowest pitch. Is one two. Oh, no, no. No swing, two and two. Almost hit it on the bounce. Again, I don't know that he'll do this, but he could tie up Castellanos upstairs. Good low ball hitter will chase the curveball down. That's why it's enticing to do. And there you see it right there, just about eight inches above the plate. But he would most certainly tie him up with any heater up above his belt and possibly beat him. Here's his 2 2. Fastball poked down the line. Foul. Wow, to the play with that one. Yeah, he was late. If he could have got it up higher, then that would have been more of the swing and miss. But now he's at least reset him. What I mean by reset him, he's gotten that area of the pitch up that he went and swung at down the middle. Now a breaking ball off that same height might entice a swing out of the zone here on a 2 2 count. Eight pitch coming to Nick Castellanos. Scoreless fourth inning. Another 2 2 from Fonder Valdez oh. is in the dirt. It's too low. And it was the right idea, but he started it too low and he knows it. He still has an aggressive hitter on a 3 2 count, so you still don't have to just throw a strike here. He makes a better breaking ball pitch here on 3 2. It'd be hard for Castellanos to not want to swing at it. Payoff hits. Wow. Spoils it. 
But see what I'm saying? Like, that's a guy you put down on your scorecard and go, he doesn't want to walk right now. And if he doesn't want to walk, I don't have to throw a lot of strikes. Now, he did get him to three and two, so he's done something right. But that pitch was by far ball all the way, and he fouled it off. How about Castellanos, though, John? Look at these long at bats yeah, the last He's getting games. closer and closer to the hitter that I think, again, next year is going to be a total different hitter for the Philadelphia Phillies. He's a beast the last couple of years. Hit 34 homers, above 300 average last year with the Cincinnati Reds. Only 12 home runs in his first year with the Phillies, and none so far in the postseason. Another 3-2. Strike three called. He went off in the inside corner to ring him up. Castellanos got to be careful here. Although he certainly has. Castellanos, taller hitter, and he knows that that ball's down and possibly inside. But the little hesitation and fastball definitely off the plate. He's going to go back and check that iPad and be verified. But. An incredible bat, and now five strikeouts in a row. And now you know, Castellanos saying, that's why I swing all the time. All right, I finally, I'm patient, I have a good take, and it means I strike out. Two up, two down, fourth inning. Alec Baum, who's got the lone hit of this game for the Phillies. Did it on the first pitch his last time. First pitch here. Here's a curve for a strike. Maldonado before that pitch just giving his starter more of an encouragement. Come on, come on, let's go. Guy Dusty Baker says is his general. Fly to right. No big deal for Kyle Tucker. That's a one, two, three, fourth inning for Fromber Valdez. Pitchers duel going in game six. The people's champ bringing us back from break. One of these two teams going to be champs at the end of this weekend. Both pitchers locked in so far. Yeah, they're both executing extremely well. And, of course, Wheeler probably doesn't have as many pitches because he's still got another half inning to pitch. And I would expect Pena to be really aggressive on this first pitch and see how Wheeler attacks it. Wheeler comes home. Jeremy Pena is aggressive. He's got a base hit on the first pitch of the fourth. And every time I think somebody's aggressive, it usually calls for an off-speed pitch. But Pena got a fastball up as he's done all postseason, delivering as if he's a 10-year veteran. Ball's up, gets on top of it. Got a hit in every game in this World Series. It's a seven-game hitting streak back to the last game of the championship series, and this kid has continued to answer every question and every step of the way. He's on to open the fourth, and Jordan Alvarez is at the plate. <coughs> Cutter to the corner for a strike. Great pitch. They've been trying to jam Alvarez and really tie him up and not let him get going. And every time you're looking at that thumper in the offense, you got to keep him quiet. And they have kept him quiet so far. Homered in each of the first two games of this postseason run for the Astros. They might not be here without him. They might not get out of the division series without him. But he's given him hardly anything since. Pops this one into shallow center for Sosa. See, I'm dropping that. I know they don't do it. Oh, yeah. You trade the runners. You put Alvarez at first, and you get a little speed off the base. No, nope. it does that. Either. Didn't you say you would do it? You, like you told coaches throughout your career. Oh, yeah. You a similar chance to do it. Yeah, I did it, but I blew it. Oh, no, you <laughs> threw, it into, threw it into center? Yeah, a little different as a pitcher in a pop-up bunt. But no one ever does that anymore just because I think the fear factor of you know, somehow the guy gets on. Well, John, in game two, Zach Wheeler did settle in after they ambushed him in the first inning. And then in the fifth, this guy here, Alex Bregman, cranked a two-run home run against him. 
six of those in the World Series in his career. Swings and misses, strike one. Well, the one thing that Zach has done a great job, and it's it's kind of flirting with, with fire, but when you're so good at throwing the ball in against a hitter who's so good at damage in, he's almost messing with Bregman's mind because no one pitches him like that. So if you're good in or third, you get him aware of the pitch way in and say, I can beat you in where you're really good. And so far, Wheeler's been able to do that. Well, they say, nobody makes me bleed my own blood. <laughs> but he throws me fastballs in here. Another fastball. It's followed into the glove, and it's 0-2. But see, that's what it does. It opens it up. We Bregman doesn't swing and miss a lot in the strike zone. I mean, it's, it's under 10%. He just doesn't. But he was able, these two pitches, to get swings and misses. Really good two-strike hitter. To reach base all 12 games this postseason. They need first one gone and an 0-2 pitch. Breckman fouls it off. Now that one he got away with. And Wheeler kind of turned to the side after he threw it. That pitch was not where that needed to be set up inside and got it right down the middle and lucky he got this one back see how he set up in but that's center cut and the velocity just beat Bregman with two strikes Wheeler tries again this time a spinner and he's out in front for strike three third strikeout for Zach Wheeler two away in the fourth The angle of which he delivers the ball makes this pitch even better because you're seeing 97 and then there's that side kind of swing and miss type breaking ball that we don't see a lot out of Wheeler. But when he throws it, the numbers against it are, are awful for hitters. Two out and you're going to face Tucker who you said you were already worrying about if you're a pitcher and now you first time up you had to show him 10 pitches. Yeah, and, and a walk to boot. Uh -huh. Again, when you're in these kind of spots in the World Series, you're just trying to get away from the guy's sweet spot. Like, you don't even mind giving up a hit right here if it doesn't score a run. But you just want to stay away from, obviously, the two-out, two-run homer. We're in a tight game that seems like four runs to score. Now on the verge of elimination to boot. It's a bouncing ball. Segura charges and gets Tucker to finish off the fourth. Zach Wheeler for the Phillies. Fromber Valdez for the Astros. Just as it should be. Deep into the World Series. Game six. No score. For the fifth in Houston. For a one. No score. Fifth inning. Game six. Phillies trying to force a game seven. Astros on the verge of a title. Bottom of the order for Fromber Valdez, who's retired seven straight. Five oh, no. K's in there. Gene Segura showed bunt and pulled it back just in time. Yeah, if you're the Phillies in this on the road, you got to win the first five innings. At least that's the way you would feel. And so far, even though they're not winning, they're winning the first five innings because it's tied. Their pitcher is matching Valdez. Now, if their offense can kind of scratch anything across, what a lift that would be. Segura grounds one to second. And an easy play for Jose Altuve. One gone in this fifth for every home run hit this postseason. T-Mobile's donating five grand to Team Rubicon's hurricane recovery efforts. And when you text relief to 595959, five, T-Mobile donates another five dollars. 91 home runs hit this postseason. That adds up to $455,000 in donations for hurricane relief. Robert Valdez. Unique. Left-handed pitcher, ground ball inducing sinker, the swing and a miss slider. Away with the first one to Matt Veerling. And uh, speaking of unique, the only other left-handed pitcher to strike out five in a row in a World Series game, Sandy Koufax. 2-0. Veerling is the last guy to reach. He walked on four pitches his first time, so he's seen six pitches, all balls. On this 2-0, strike one. Well, the mechanics again. I just fall in love with a guy who has clean mechanics for over the 
really over the course of time you repeat those mechanics you shouldn't have trouble throwing strikes. And the only reason he has trouble throwing strikes sometimes is he's got such incredible movement on his pitches. And every once in a while he takes the foot off the gas with his sinker almost as trying to get ahead without really firing that two seamer in the zone. El Tube again. Two up, two down. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Chevrolet. Electric vehicles for everyone, everywhere. And by Indeed. We help people get jobs. Game six at 93. Phillies fans, for not to be reminded, Joe Carter's walk-off home run. Two quick outs in this fifth inning. Now the nine-hitter Edmundo Sosa, who had the best swing of the day for the Phillies and just missed a home run. He sure did. Pulls it. 20 feet left. It's gone. Jordan Alvarez, the left fielder, caught it right against the wall, just beyond the Crawford boxes. Strike one. This is reminding me of game six in 91, where... Steve Avery dueled to a 0-0 game in our elimination game. We were down three games to two and ultimately won in the ninth, one to nothing. But when you have two pitchers doing this right here, you know the hitters are feeling the pressure too, saying, ah, oh, man, just scratch a run and let our bullpen late go to work. All Avery did in that series was win two one to nothing games. Brown mm. Valdez, a gem of his own. Home with an 0 2 pitch. After he got rocked in both World Series starts last year, five runs in both games against Atlanta, failed to make it through the third inning of the year. A year later, game two, six and a third, just one run. Game six, four and two thirds, no runs. And only one hit against him. Another 0 2 pitch. You wonder why pitchers throw balls back out? It's because they don't have the feel. Not every baseball is particularly the same. And when you've had a baseball in your hand your whole life, you could blindfold every pitcher and you can know if it's oblong, if the stitching is too high or what have you. And you can tell he's sweating pretty good just trying to get control over everything here and, and have another potential clean inning. Here's one, two. I'm all fouled off. off. So severely stays alive. You're talking about the mix of Valdez. This is why it's so hard to hit him. Well, he's not very tall, but he throws tall. And what I mean by that is the ball comes out at that same slot. You have no idea. You have no idea right there until the end. You have no idea what it is, and you're trying to guess as a hitter. That's why they have a lot of swings and misses out of the zone on breaking balls. He's carving through them tonight. Strikes out at Mundo Sosa. Robert Valdez, 8Ks through five scoreless innings. Halfway... Well, the hardware is in the house tonight. Astros trying to win it. Phillies trying to force a chance to win it tomorrow. And these two starters back and forth, tremendous. Tonight's telecast is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. A grand slam for your budget. Now for the Astros in this fifth inning. Six, seven, and eight coming up. Christian Vasquez grounded into a double play his first time. Wheeler comes home. Strike one with a fastball. Who's going to blink first? Neither starter willing to even think about the bullpen getting going. Over the mound, waiting at second, Gene Segura. And Vasquez, the first out of the fifth. 
Up comes Trey Mancini, and we go down to Ken Rosenthal. Well, Joe, Dustin Baker's powers of observation are second to none. Late in game five, Trey Mancini took a 1-1 fastball for a strike, and Baker noticed that from his body language, Mancini was caught in between. The two talked about it today. Baker told him, trust your instincts, have a plan, stick to it. You see that conversation earlier today. And after he started the postseason 0 for 18, a base hit, first one against Wheeler, his first time up. Well, if he gets the two strikes again, I'd be shocked if Wheeler doesn't throw the breaking balls to get him a chase off the plate. Only one in that last at bat, and then he gave him a fastball that Mancini gladly touching first base. Euphoric feeling <laughs> when you're struggling. Deadline pickup from the Orioles. He takes by the hands, and it's one and one. And just another example of the touch of Dusty Baker, who's been a manager for 25 seasons. Trey Mancini, one of the 558 players that he's managed. A lot of those guys look at him as either like a brother figure or a father figure. And so many people, those former players or opponents of his when he was a player, watching this game from afar, pulling for Dusty Baker. The one-two to Mancini is fouled off. You know what we're going to see Dusty Baker do in this game, I feel? He'll be in the far end of the dugout. If this team doesn't score in the next couple innings, look for him to change some mojo. I've seen him go down there, change spots, whatever it takes. Another one, too. Oh, nope. so the go. day that he took the job in 2020, Dusty said, this is it. This is my last hurrah. This is my last chance to accomplish the goal. And now in his 3,981st game as a big league manager, he's one win away. Closest he's been since game six in 2002 when he was five outs away. The Angels scored... Three runs in the seven, three runs in the eight to win that game and then beat his Giants the next night in game seven. A 2-2 two -two to Mancini. A good pitch from Wheeler. Two gone in the fifth. Well, you got a full slate of NFL action tomorrow on Fox, highlighted by Seahawks and Cardinals. Check for the game in your area. Then on November 13th, one of the biggest games of the year in the NFC. Historic rivals face off in Lambeau, and the Cowboys take on the Packers. You know what I never asked Dusty of all these times we get to talk to him? Uh-huh. Are those flavored toothpicks? You ever had a flavored toothpick? Yeah. Fantastic. Way better than the wooden taste. <laughs> <laughs> I would concur. <laughs> Jazz McCormick with two gone. Takes a strike. Well, I'm sure they're going to be watching. Rob's going to be watching to see how strong Wheeler stays with that four-seam and two-seam fastball. Seen a high percentage of it. And right now, he's not showing any ill effects. The only thing you watch for when a pitcher gets a little fatigued is he starts getting a little lower with his release point, flattens out those pitches, and it doesn't have the same late life. But right now, at 61 pitches, don't see any signs of that being the case on Zach Wheeler. His 0-2 to McCormick. Fastball got him swinging. Back-to-back -back K's to finish off a 1-2-3 fifth at the top of the order for the Phillies. Clemson Foundation for a season total of 550000 to support the Foundation's minority scholarship and leadership programs. No score to the sixth inning in game six. Top of the order for the Phillies. Kyle Schwarber to lead off against Framber Valdez. Well, it's not desperate time yet for Philly, but the way this game is going and each pitcher being on their game and the bullpen that's waiting you would think in this inning right here set up for the Phillies best chance of scoring and they really haven't had much Valdez has retired 10 straight his first one to Schwarber's in for a strike a little tighter breaking pitch there well that's what he does he has the ability to show shorten it and make it big and Is a one. 
You know, the Phillies, two wins in this series have reflected their season-long identities. Perseverance in game one, power in game three, and for the Astros, the last two wins have done the same. Two runs allowed the last two games by a team that's been led by its pitching all year. Valdez doing it again here in game six ahead of Schwarber one and two. And yeah, Schwarber's been in between tonight, and you can't blame him because it's tough to hit when this guy on the mound is as good as he is. And Schwarber, the only way to really kind of combat that is to think the other way, but that's not who Schwarber is. He, we've already seen the 490, 488 foot home run pull side. On a one two pitch, he takes the ball. Because the reason I say that, if you don't understand that at home, is if a hitter is thinking middle to away, you stay longer and wait on a breaking ball. But they don't want to get beat on fastballs. So staying longer and waiting, and the fastball comes, you're, you're late. So every hitter will tell you, or most will tell you, I'm on the fastball, adjust to the breaking ball. Eh, well, with a guy like this and the amount of breaking balls he throws, sometimes you go up there sitting on it and get success. Let's see on 2-2. It's a fastball and it's cranked to right field and it's gone! Astros blink first. Schwarber with a blast and it's 1-0 in the sixth. It's about as quick a hands as you're going to see when we get a chance to see this replay in Schwarber. Has been doing this throughout his career. Watch how quick this is. This is a sinker that comes back into the middle part of the plate and he makes it disappear. You've got to be so quick to the ball right there. And poo. It's what the Phillies needed. First one to score. Schwarber with his third home run in the last four games, his sixth in his last 11 games, and it's 1-0 Phillies in the sixth. You know, I said he's been in between on some of the pitches. He got <clears throat> really caught looking twice, but got the benefit of a call that turned into a walk the yeah. next time he struck out. Well, whatever his game plan was the third time, Check that off as an execute. Does it again in the postseason. Here's a soft bouncing ball left side. Bregman with a bare hand. What a play by Alex Bregman. Well, you got to be so quick on your feet. And this play right here is practiced a thousand times in his mind and in spring training and it becomes a staple for most third basemen who are so gifted like Bregman is. One away in the sixth. Robert Valdez gives up a home run at home for the first time since July 3rd. <coughs> Got the call there. Strike one on Rio Muto. You know what the best part about it? He didn't he didn't budge. He didn't move. He didn't get mad, didn't change his emotion. Certainly don't want to give it up, but Bregman again, this one much easier. And Rio Muto is out number two. Let's go back and look at this pitch sequence on Schwarber and just first two times he had him baffled all right so he starts off with the hard breaking ball throws the slower one good take so far that one right there buckled him but then he came right back with a breaking ball off the plate and the fastball inner third and he turned on it and didn't let it come back most experienced guy in the postseason on this Phillies roster Kenny told us he addressed the team after they fell behind 3-2 in Philadelphia the wisdom he picked up and his previous six trips to the postseason, Harper shows okay. one and takes a ball. For Kyle Schwarber, was his 15th postseason home run. Well, for Rob Thompson, that's huge. Even though it's only one run, it allows him to manage the game. He's going to manage this game, obviously, as a game seven, so his starter gets in any trouble. He'll have his horses ready to go. 
We prefer a little more leash than a one run, but at least gives him some momentum to get guys ready to finish this game. And Zach Wheeler was a massive question coming into this game, given the velocity being down last time. But he has answered all those questions, and they finally have gotten him some support. Harper turns on a ball down the line, hooking. Foul. He nearly parked one of his own out there. Well, we talked about, and you've, t you've asked me, you know, what's easier when you've had success to pitch again or when you haven't had success in making the adjustment? I think when you haven't had success in making an adjustment, we saw Verlander do it, grind out a win. We, we've seen so far Wheeler do it now and take a difference of his first game to his second game in the World Series. Curve gets him to chase. And finishes off the six, but the Phillies break through first. Babe Schwarber again. Started last game with a home run. Starts the scoring here in game six with a home run. It's 1-0 Philadelphia facing elimination. Melchin. Lit the fire with a solo shot to lead off the sixth against Fraber Valdez. Astros wasting no time. Maldonado crowded the plate, got hit by a pitch. He was replaced by El Tuve on a fielder's choice. And then a base hit for Jeremy Pena has runners at the corners. Jordan Alvarez coming up. And Jose Alvarado, this is the matchup, John, they've looked for all series. They're going to have it again. Alvarez facing off with Alvarado. Well, you want to be a reliever in the big leagues. Uh, the last couple times now, Alvarado has had the bases loaded, nobody out. Unfortunately, a tough situation didn't work out well. Now he's got first and third, one out, much better situation as opposed to bases loaded, nobody out, but facing a guy that he is hoping he can either get a ground ball double play or a swing and a miss strikeout to keep this game one nothing. And Alvarado is kind of guy that can do that. He's faced him three times, 0 for 2. He hit him with the bases loaded last time he faced him. First pitch, ground ball foul. Jordan Alvarez, walk-off home run, first game of the postseason. Game-winning home run, game two of the postseason. Five for 42 cents. 40 at-bats since that go-ahead home run in game two. Well, he won the battle on the first pitch. He thought he could get him a uh, first strike and look for him to go to that hard cutter to get a swing over the top barrel, but he was all over that sinker first pitch. Here's the 0-1. Alvarez. Takes way outside. Rio Muto able to get his glove to it. One ball, one strike. Pena trying to mess up the vision of Alvarado. He's got kind of a big one-way lead, meaning he's jockeying, trying to get Alvarado to think differently that he might be going, even though he's just staying right there. Can Jordan Alvarez come through? He's ahead, 2-1. When you come in as a reliever, especially late in the game, you're always thinking, how can I get out of the jam? But sometimes you got to make sure, how can I avoid the big inning? The base is loaded, nobody out. That's two runs or less would be getting out of a jam. Here, at bare minimum, you've got to keep the game tied. Obviously, the best case scenario is you go back in the inning up 1-0. On a 2-1, Alvarez hits a high drive center field. Veerling's back. Titanic drive for the ages over the batter's eye in center field. 
And Jordan Alvarez has given the Astros a 3-1 lead in the sixth inning. Bregman. We talked about it. It was his 3-1 homer in game one that possibly could be the reason they're here. And it's his 3-1 homer that possibly could be the reason why they win the World Series. What a blast. And the more you see a reliever in a series, the better chances start going to the hitter. And you saw he knew right away. Everybody in this crowd knew right away. And unfortunately, Alvarado knew right away. You're not supposed to be able to hit him up there. No. I don't think I've ever. I didn't think that was possible. Two oh. Ball three. If you can believe it. Not many teams wanted Jordan Alvarez coming out of Cuba. And the biggest reason why. Nobody thought that he'd hit for enough power. In his last two years in Cuba, he hit one home run, and it was an inside-the-park home run. Then he comes to the United States, he keeps working, works all day on his swing, adds the power, starts weightlifting, starts eating better, and now you've got a full-fledged monster who's vying to be a World Series hero. Well, I told you Dusty Baker was going to move positions. You know where he's at? <laughs> he's at the camera well and third down the first baseline. Don't tell me. Goodness, the magic touch, Dusty Baker. And it's the guy that he has many times said reminds him of a young Barry Bonds with the biggest swing of this World Series. A 3 2 to Breckman. He's in the dirt. That's ball four. One more look. Well, not one more, but for now, another look at a 450 foot shot. 450 feet straight away is like hitting a 500 foot down the line pull. And I'm telling you, on you, on you, on you, on you. Catching home run ball. Zero. That probability was less than yeah. one. They need to get that guy some security. It looks like they already got some security for him. That is one you want to hold on to. Ball and a strike on Tucker. Well, it is so imperative now for Philadelphia to kind of slow this momentum down. And that's why they got their other big time reliever up because they know. 7 8 9 against some flame throwing bullpen of Houston. One one pitch. Ball two on Tucker. Well, this would fulfill the three batter minimum for Jose Alvarado. So Anthony Dominguez is ready to come in as soon as that's complete. Zach Wheeler, five scoreless innings. First three reach against him here in the six. Bullpen comes in. You blink and the game has changed. 2 1. And see, I, I know that, you know, the, the hardest part about managing in the, po in the postseason is everything gets critiqued, everything gets second guessed, everything's always micromanaged. And. Because you said it, this is what he's done. Wheeler at 70 pitches, even though he'd given up, you know, just that single up the middle, the matchup called for lefty on left, and it did not work out so far for the Phillies. Hook out. And the reason you, you can say that is, is because the feeling and rhythm of a starting pitcher is exactly that. When he's connected, the, I'll tell you every hitter will tell you the same thing you took him out. Thank you Even though the next guy throws 99. Thank you because this it's just you've seen the flow of the game But it is 
the way Philadelphia and the matchups of their great left-handed and right-handed combination pitchers have been doing it all, se all postseason. It worked until the last two times. Well, the third time through the order penalty is a real thing. That's why the game has changed. You have all these great relievers coming in to protect instead of having a guy face the lineup for the third time. But another penalty is something you're touching on, and that is seeing the reliever time yes. and again throughout the series. You just a different kind yeah, of problem. You rarely, you're not going to see a reliever in a regular season in a three-game series three times. You're just not. But in the postseason, in a seven-game series, you could see them four to five times. And that hitter starts gaining info and deep, you know, and taking advantage of it. Tucker on 3-2. Browns one again foul. And the other side of the point is we think that relievers are immune to just every time they get out there, they're going to have the same stuff every single time. You know how many times they warm up and don't get in or have to rev the engine. So this is what the Philadelphia Phillies have been able to do, and it's why they're here. Ranger Suarez down there in the Phillies bullpen. Another 3 2. Tucker down swinging. Now, the other side of that coin, John, is that one thing that can give the Phillies some hope going later into this game is that even as dominant as the Astros' pen has been all postseason, they're seeing the same guys as well. Dusty Baker's run the same arms out there throughout this World Series. And as he tries to protect a narrow lead here late, you've got Presley and Montero who have both pitched in four to five games. It's going to do it for Jose Alvarado. You're Don Alvarez. So many monster home runs throughout his short big league career, but none bigger than this. A three-run shot that takes a 1-0 deficit. Makes it a 3-1 lead for the Astros. One win from a world championship. Dominguez two gone bottom of the six that's a big run sitting out there at second as Christian Vasquez takes ball one what a what a crazy sixth inning right how much fun is this I mean right now Phillies fans are saying no fun at all but as a fan of baseball it doesn't get any better one ball one strike you know, there may be some people that have an issue with how this inning started, and I get it. I mean, but it wasn't the super intentional hit by pitch. It was just the intentional get on top of the plate with a guy that struggles to get hits. He got hit, and it started a three run out. One ball, two strikes on Vasquez. Yeah, there's so many things. And you know, you look back at moments in the World Series and you look back and you'll find that home run ages from now if the Astros hang on to win this game. But so many moments when you squint and look within the yeah. games, within the innings. And Maldonado, that subtle adjustment from the no offense catcher, starts what at this point is the key rally. And I really thought, again, you know, it's it's not second guessing, but I really thought that Alvarado was going to have to hit a cutter, and he did. He had a he had a straight down the middle two seamer at 98, 99, and it was not the pitch obviously that Alvarado was trying to locate. It was a 99 mile per hour fastball, which makes it the fastest pitch that Jordan Alvarez has homered on in his career. Base hit left field, Christian Vasquez. Bregman heads home. Schwarber can't get it cleanly. Massive insurance run. Knocked in by Vasquez. as we said is a good low ball hitter and where was that pitch it was in off the plate but it was low and he allowed him to get the barrel of the bat to the ball Schwarber trying to make a do or die play field it and throw don't think it would have mattered but what a huge two out base hit and so the two catchers for the Astros chipping in and 
their own individual ways in this sixth inning. We detail what Maldonado did, and now Christian Vasquez, just his third start of the postseason. This one coming is the DH. A two-out RBI single to make it 4-1. Trey Mancini. surprised that Hoskins is playing that kind of halfway off the bag and letting Vasquez get as big a lead as he wants. One and two. The sixth inning is the one that you'll circle at this point. Looking back on game six, Schwarber got the Phillies in front, and then a legendary swing from Jordan. MLB's RBI program is designed to support organizations that provide baseball and softball playing opportunities to youth and underserved communities. Visit MLB.com slash RBI for more information. So this is up to the Astros' bullpen, which has been historically good. Hector Neris. Making his third appearance of the series. Ball one on Nick Castellanos. The Phillies have had answers all year. They were eight games below 500 at the end of May. They were the last team into the postseason field. Started their postseason by scoring six runs in the ninth inning to erase a deficit. That's a strike and it's one and one. Did it in the division series. Did it in the championship series. Came back from five nothing game one of the World Series. Again. Or is this the Astros time? Houston nine outs away from a second world championship. One and two on Nick Castellanos. Well, the one thing that this series goes longer, you think the Houston Astros gain the momentum and they have the, the advantage. Well, they took the hottest offense at home and they started the last 27 innings really dominating with their pitching. And that's what they're that's how they got here. And their bullpen has been almost unhittable. So they have, when they were down, they have flexed their muscles with their arms and timely hit. Neres deals. Castellanos takes it off the end of the bat. Shadow right center field. El Tube says that he's got it in does. Well, the Phillies took a 2-1 series lead by hitting five home runs in game three. Christian Javier then comes back and unthinkably has six innings and a combined no-hitter. Verlander gets his first World Series win, giving up one run over five innings, and then Framberville does tonight, continuing what the identity of his Astros team has been all year. Yeah, it started with that man, Javier. He kind of closed the narrative of this unbeatable team at home in the Phillies, and then look at the Astros have done in the postseason that is that's about all you can ask for that's five in runs in 51 and a third John. <laughs> and four of those five runs came on four solo home runs yes yeah. yeah so it wasn't anything other than solo home run you think they could score the Astros did enough they only scored so far in this World Series in nine different innings but it's a crooked number in six of those that have helped them so far. 0-2 oh, on Alec Bone. That's been the thing all year. Just enough from the offense. They've not been as good of an offensive team as they have in recent years during this great run. But they've been good. And the pitching staff has been great. Plenty enough to make it all hold up. Bohm, who's one for two today. It's one of the two hits for the Phillies. He's one for three. Neris flames a fastball by him. Yeah. 
This is just go ahead and hit it top of the zone. Flame. 94 looking like 98 from the old Philly. Eight years in Philadelphia, didn't get a chance to play in the postseason, hit free agency, and his number one priority was going somewhere that he felt like could take him to October. And here in November, trying to provide the bridge to the clinching game in the World Series. Gene Segura with the bases empty in two out. Late on a fastball, which has been sneaky fast in this inning. Oh, man, he is... Staying back over the rubber and letting his fastball go. Haven't really even got to his great split finger that often. You see he's going to hold the grip behind him as a split finger. And then when he goes to the glove, if he needs to change, he changes to a fastball much easier than doing the opposite. Giddy up. Because if he holds the fastball behind his body, then he has to do too much to change to the split. So anyone who throws splits in the big leagues, they will always hold it as a split and then change it in the glove to something else if they have to. There's a good look at it right there. 0 2 pitch. Got him. Hector Neres with a 1 2 3 7. The Astros are six outs away. And now stay tuned for a look at Disney's Strange World in theaters November 23rd. Sit from Christian Vasquez. 4-1 Astros to the bottom of the seventh for an organization looking for its second championship. Sports Illustrated famously predicted in 2014 that they would win it in 17. And they did. They've been three times since. Looking for their first title since the 2017 season. Five players remain from that 2017 team. Three position players as they look for their second title and their first one since. Down to the field, here's Ken Rosenthal. Well, guys, a World Series title here would not vindicate the franchise. It wouldn't validate what happened in 2017 and 18. The illegal electronic sign stealing for which the Astros were fined $5 million, stripped of their first and second round draft picks in 2020 and 21. There are some of the same players who remain, but... This is a different team. Some of the heroes tonight, much different. Pena, Alvarez, Valdez. A different manager, Dusty Baker. A different general manager, James Click. And we are playing under different rules, stricter rules regarding electronic sign stealing. These Astros should be celebrated for who they are. They lead 4-1, bottom of the seventh inning. Chaz McCormick leads off against Zach Eflin. That's I'm good. I'm good. He got me back here. One of the guys remaining from that 2017, Lance McCullers, when the cheating scandal was revealed, he said, we knew the one thing we could do was win, and we could win a lot. We understand people still aren't going to like us. We knew if we kept winning, you'd at least have to start to respect us. And a sixth consecutive trip to the championship series this year, a fourth World Series trip in six years, and as Kenny touched on, the GM has changed, the manager's changed, the roster is almost entirely changed, but the winning hasn't. And now the Astros are on the verge of an undeniable title. The one two to McCormick in the dirt, two and two. Still have six outs to get, and Dusty Baker's been in this spot before. Leading late. Leading the series 3-2 in game six. Back to 2002, we we're touching out when he was with the Giants against the Angels. Well, you well if you're going to do something improbable like the Phillies have done in this season to get to this point, you might as well continue that theme and do the improbable against a bullpen that has not given up anything. So Philadelphia counted out June 3rd. 
Start of the postseason counted out. World Series. It defied logic over and over. Swing and a miss from McCormick. One going in the seventh. And now a quick word from Capital One. Capital One is the official bank and credit card partner of Major League Baseball. What's in your wallet? Martin Maldonado, one of those footnotes to the big sixth inning. He started it by getting right on top of the plate and getting hit by a pitch. Strike one from Eflin. And Maldonado, even though he's one of the worst offensive players statistically in baseball, Astros would tell you he's one of the most valuable guys on the team with his defense or the way that he handles the staff. One of the guys said if we could quantify preparation and leadership, this guy would lead the league. And then you add in the, the little wrinkles that he can provide you offensively like he did last inning. And he's moved back to a normal spot in the box here. It's one and two. On the left is his at-bat in the third. Uh, on the right, when he got hit in the sixth. And that's well within the game. I mean, you just don't see batters switch anything. You don't see batters take away sinkers, get up in the box. You don't see anybody move. He hits one in the air to left field, but hooked it off the end of the barrel. Kyle Schwarber runs under it, two away. And for that, I give him a ton of credit. I mean, it may not look pretty. It might look to some people like, eh, that's not baseball. It actually is in this moment to do something different when you can't, you may be a little bit an underdog when it comes to hitting against, let's say, Wheeler. And it proved to be the inning. Altuve reached on a fielder's choice in that inning. No for three with a couple Ks. Astros trying to win a World Series without getting an RBI from Altuve in the postseason. But I just find this so amazing that we set up the series in a way where Alvar Alvarado, the third hitter, has been the has been the target by the Phillies bullpen. But it's been Pena that has made that target harder to be successful because every time they came in to face Alvarado, Pena had done something special. And even though Alvarado was one in four in those situations, it's a pretty good one. Two balls in one strike. Well, and the Phillies will hope to capitalize on a similar thing. They're going to see Ryan Abreu likely. It'll be the fourth time that they see him. And then you've got Ryan Presley, who the Astros would have for the ninth inning. They've seen him five times. Take your pardon four times they've seen Presley. This would be the fifth. Eflin home with a 2 2. Altuve waits on it, yanks it to the left field corner. That's down. Altuve on his way to second with a two out double as Schwarber digs it out. Tied for fourth all time with his 103rd postseason hit. Well, he got a hanger right in the middle of the plate, hooked it down the line. I think he was content to get a single, and then this allowed him to get the second. And now Jeremy Pena continued his MVP case two more hits in this game <coughs> two seam first strike who's got your vote if this holds up right now is it him or is it from Valdez? I, I mean it, it 
He's gotten a hit in every series. Or is it Jordan Alvarez, I guess? I mean, no, it's 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 got it's between those two. It's between Valdez and Pena, and I would lean towards Pena as much as I'm a pitcher at home. Sitting 417 in this World Series. One ALCS MVP. Tries to become the first rookie position player to win a World Series MVP. Two rookie winners have been pitchers. Larry Sherry for the Dodgers in 1959, and then LeVon Hernandez for the Marlins in 97. It really is a tough call because you got a starting pitcher that just gave up two runs and two outings to a really, really good offense, and then you've got this guy playing every day and doing everything. So I'm going to pay him. Oh, two to him. Chase the breaking ball, and that finishes off the seventh. Phillies have six outs with which to work. Down 4-1, down 3-2 in the series. Sabreu comes total bases each day during the postseason. Compete to win 50 grand. Enter MLB Base Chase in the MLB Play app or through MLB.com slash play. Restrictions apply. See official rules for details. Eighth inning, 4-1 Astros. They lead the series three games to two. They lead the game by three. Ryan Abreu's on, and Bryson Stott will pinch hit for Matt Beerling. Strike one. You know, they talk about, you know, in NASCAR, how much horsepower your car has. You know what the Astros have in the, in the bullpen? A ton of horsepower. A 98-mile-an-hour fastball and a slider that's virtually unhittable out of Abreu. Caught at third by a drawn-in Bregman. They put 98 and played it, Scott, but Bregman quick hands as the hot corner proves to be exactly that. I mean, this is the hot corner. It didn't come off quite as hard, but still, when you're in, you got to have good re have good reaction. An out's an out. And now there's only five left for Philly. Another pinch hitter here with the righty on the mound. Here is Brandon Marsh trying to get some traffic ahead of the top of the order. Well, the Phillies since hitting five home runs in game three have scored just three runs on nine hits since. They are nine for their last 93. takes away one ball one strike and here sits Dusty Baker again that close five outs away for Dusty Clubs looking for a guy like this, right? I mean, they want a bullpen full of them, and there's so many great arms in the game today. Houston just happens to have a lot of them. Abreu's 2 1 is hit in the air to deep right center field, but Tucker settles under it, and Marsh is out number two in the eighth. A quick word from Evan Williams Bourbon. Postseason calls for award-winning bourbon. Evan Williams, 1783 Small Batch. And Brian Abreu didn't even start playing baseball until he was 14. He was a basketball player. He had very little time for sports anyways, because from the time he was 11 or 12, he was working two jobs to help his family out. He was working in construction. He was working with his uncle, who was a mechanic. And when he played baseball, he was a hitter and an outfielder. And then somebody said, why don't you give pitching a try? Changed his life. Here he is in the eighth inning of what he and the Astros hope is the clinching game. Kyle Schwarber. Strike one. Wicked rip at a wicked pitch. Well, Schwarber, uh, Joe. We started this postseason. He couldn't look more lost. But boy, he found it in the right time and he found it and got back locked in to 
being the most dangerous left-handed hitter to lead off a game with power. Not yeah. exactly a speedster. Yeah, kind of guy that uh, makes you uncomfortable right away as that starting pitcher. Started the postseason one for 20. Six home runs in 11 games since then. But in a one and two hole here. Joe's butt with two strikes, pops it up, back, and strike three. And the Houston Astros are three outs away from their second world championship. Dusty Baker, who originally signed with the Atlanta Braves out of high school, Broken in the majors, bat behind Hank Aaron. Got traded to the Dodgers, where he won a championship as a player in 81. He's managed five franchises. He's taken them all to the postseason. More than 1,800 hits, more than 2,000 wins. The only other guy that can say that, Joe Torrey. The only thing missing, a ring as a manager. And here in his 25th year, 2,093 wins under his belt, the most of any manager without a world championship. Finds himself, as Astros find themselves, three outs away. David Robertson on to handle the bottom of the eighth. Ball on Jordan Alvarez. Who at this point has the swing that they'll always talk about in this game six if this score holds. Bryson Stott stays in the game and plays short. Brandon Marsh into the game in center. One and two on Alvarez. Three run homer in the bottom of the ninth. Two outs. That's a dream. That was game one. Two run homer off of Luis Castillo. That was in game two. In between there it was some rough go. It wasn't some locked in. You'd think he'd be locked in. Some days off take you away from your rhythm. In game six, third swing, or third big swing of the series. Down swinging here, and they ain't going to remember those. No. Strikeouts and the 5 for 42 in the middle of the big swings. They remember the big moments, the moments that last. And he's got a few of them. So for the Phillies in the ninth inning, they'll have two, three, and four coming up against Presley. Astros looking to add on a little bit here with the heart of their lineup. Alex Bregman spins this one back foul. Now Dusty, we were talking about this earlier, has friends all over the world pulling for him. It's really not hyperbole to say that. 54 years in the game, that's 54 years of teammates and foes and all those players that played for him. Outside the game, it's a list of who's who. I mean, he's friends with Willie Nelson and Snoop Dogg. Friends at Joe Namath and Rob Lowe. He once partied with Jimi Hendrix. And he surely got friends up in heaven looking down, pulling for him too. Everybody from Satchel Page to Hank Aaron to Tommy Lasorda. O2. Ball one. And no bigger fans up there watching than his parents. Dusty said before the game today, when he does let himself reflect on this whole thing, if it does get to this moment, where he's able to get what he's always wanted, that's who he's going to think about first, his parents. Including his mom, Christine, who passed away in January. Two and two on Alex Bregman. So he'll think of them. Countless people are thinking of him. Robertson's 2-2. Full count on Bregman. Well, 
always said the Astros one through five had to do most of the damage. They did it again. Yep, four runs have scored. Top four in the lineup. Another 3 2 is a curve, and it's hooked into left field. A base hit for Bregman. Schwarber grabs it. Bregman on his way to second. Schwarber's throw. Not in time, and a double for Alex Bregman. Well, we see this replay. I think it's going to be an incredible slide by Bregman. And Schwarber made a nice play and a throw that got on the right side of the bag, which made Segura have to swing around and put the what looked like an easy tag of an out but watch him pull that outside hand to the outside part of the bag Ooh! wow it's gonna probably ow and out but look at that this is the sweep tag across the bag and that gets his finger mm. We're going to talk about a game of inches. Whew. What a shot. What a crew we're lucky enough to have with Fox Sports. And what uh, flexibility he's lucky to have on that finger. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Oh. Playing the waiting is the hardest part. <laughs> that means more than one thing at this point. The call here. And the celebration. I hope he's coming shortly. So what? That finger's got him stinging right now. He's got like five months to rest it. If they can hang on here. Jane Segura saying, <laughs> never in doubt. I told you that finger's going to swell. Jane's an expert. Broke his finger earlier this year. Pass on some advice to Alex. How to heal it fast. This is obviously a big call here. They're going to be sure that they're going to get it right. After Bregman, it's Tucker. Astros got four runs in the six. Trying to add on here in the eighth, and here's your call. After review, the call on the field is overturned. The runner is out. So as the Phillies come up in the ninth inning looking for a miracle rally, keep that one in mind as they face Ryan Presley. Well, tomorrow you've got a chance to win hundred grand of Terry Bradshaw's money on Fox Bet Super 6. Just get the free Super 6 app on your phone now and enter your six picks in the NFL Sunday Challenge Contest. Two out, and here's Tucker. No strikes. Timelessly cool, that man. 73 years old, Dusty Baker. One ball, one strike on Tucker. And his closer, Ryan Presley. Five out save in game five. Off day yesterday came at a good time following that. Ready for his chance to lock this one down. Looking for his first three. Shot foul one and two. Oh my. Look out over there, huh? Took it out of the glove. Put it in the dugout. Astros trying to do something that's not been done 
in almost a decade. That is clinch at home. Last team to clinch at home, the Red Sox. And 2013, it was nine years ago, last time it happened. Tucker pops it into center field. Schwarber will make the call and the catch. Fasten those seat belts to the ninth inning. We go in game six. Two, three, and four coming up for the Phillies. Ryan Presley coming on with the Astros. Three outs away. Presley got a five out save in game five. He is on there for the ninth inning. Astros three outs away from a world championship. This guy has been dynamite. Yeah, he has, and it's really because of his breaking balls, and they just don't hit it. And the year it's only 138. It got even better in the postseason. 111. Having trouble with the uh, pitch comp here. The device in his hat that lets him hear the signs from Martin Maldonado. Not often that happens in your home uh, stadium, but it's not often you pitch in any home stadium with a chance to win the World Series. As they get this figured out. Reminds you that the World Baseball Classic is back, an exclusive on Fox, all beginning March 2023. Go to worldbaseballclassic.com for more information. That man there is going to play for Team USA. He's going to bat third in this ninth inning. It's Hoskins, Rio Muto, and Harper against Presley. Well, uh, the state and obvious, uh, every closer knows, no matter what the situation is, get the first hitter out. Hoskins, who is 0 for his last 13. Swings and misses. Strike one. You grind hard no matter what the circumstances are. Obviously, if it's just a one-run game, it's one swing can tie the game. But he has three runs to work with. But you don't want that leadoff guy to get on. A little bit outside, one ball, one strike. Ryan Presley came over at the deadline in 2018, so he's looking for his first ring. So many of these Astros are. Presley's 1 1 pitch. Bounce foul, and it's 1 and 2. Again, if you haven't seen Presley throw much, he doesn't throw anything straight. Everything cuts. He has tremendous spin on his pitches. So a cutter that is going to be his version of a fastball. And then he throws a knuckle curve that is so fast that it breaks so quickly. The hitter has really little time to recognize it. Hoskins starting the ninth. Pops it up. Tucker. Astros two outs away. You know what we talk all the time and we you've, you've mentioned what this would mean to the players what this would mean to Dusty Baker. You know who we forget that it means the most to probably the fans mm -hmm. the home fans here that get a chance. To get one without any asterisks. Fans deserve it. Town deserves it. 4 1 in the ninth inning. Bases empty, one gone. JT Riamuto lines the ball into center field, and the Phillies have hope. Riamuto with the first hit since Schwarber's home run in the sixth. And that's why getting the first hitters out out is so huge because now with a runner on you're always one pitch away from getting out of the inning for the double play and you also know that this man can't tie it up. When you're a closer you don't care about your sexy stats you just care about walking in to end the game before they tie it up. And you look back to that insurance run brought in by Christian Vasquez with a two-out base hit. Looming yeah. large now instead of Harper representing the tying run. Tying run in the on-deck circle in the form of Nick Castellanos. Harper is 0 for 3 here in game 6. He slices a pop in the left. Jordan Alvarez. The Astros are one out away. They won their first World Series in their 56th year in 2017. 
They got back in 2019. They won 107 games that year. They led the World Series 3-2 and then fell short. Last year, last year they got there again. They were favored again. Then fell to the Braves. Another shot. And an out away. And a lot of cell phones out to capture the moment. <laughs> Castellanos. There goes the runner. Fly ball down the right field line. Tucker comes on. Kyle Tucker. This time they finish the job. The Houston Astros world champions. Dusty Baker has his ring in his 25th year as a manager. Guy that brought credibility and stability back to the Astros in the wake of the scandal. Guy that's been in baseball for more than 50 years. He's a baseball legend. He's a beautiful human being. And he has the ring that everybody wanted him to get. You know, you're through the Astros and that four or five players we're talking about as you watch this replay. Everything comes full circle right here. And you feel like you're stuck in quicksand with so much over your head, so much explaining, and it carries over for a long time. Well, you know what? They got out of it. And Dusty Baker got out of his. And what a moment for Houston and what a moment for the city. You know, Dusty Baker was a finalist for the Phillies job when they hired Joe Girardi in 2020, and he was crushed when he didn't get it. And he goes back home to California, and he talks with his son, Darren, and Darren says, Dad, maybe you weren't supposed to get that job. Maybe you got to be patient to go where you're meant to be. A week later, the phone rang. It was the Houston Astros. The right man at the right time for the right team. And now world champion as a manager for the first time as the Astros beat the Phillies in six games in 2022. Down to that party. Here's Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Joe. Jose, you were on third base when Jordan hit that three-run homer. What did you think when you saw that ball travel 450 feet? You know, I, obviously I knew as soon as he hit that one, it was a big, big fly. First time I see that in this ballpark. But, you know, I just was happy because I know how good our guys are in the bullpen. And, you know, by that time, I, I thought 3-1 would be a good lead for us to give us a chance to win the game. But then Christian came out behind him and get the big, uh, our, the fourth run. And, you know, like I said, we're just happy uh, we won. Dusty Baker, what does he mean to this team, Jose? You know, him, he means everything. Like I said many, many times, he came here at the right time and, you know, came here in the right team. Jose, congratulations. Thank you. Now over to Tom Verducci. Thanks, Ken. Martin Maldonado, whenever they talk about the 2022 Astros, they'll talk about the rally that began with you. Tell me about your approach with Wheeler, against Wheeler, leading off the inning, and how you moved up closer to home plate and why. 
you know, it, it was running that sinker in really good. Uh, through all the game, we were chasing sinkers in. So I know I, right there, I got to get on base. You know, my job leading off, got to get on base. So I said, let me get closer, as close as I can. Don't move. Hopefully, hit you. Martin, every game in this series, your pitcher struck out at least 10 batters, 12 more today. Describe the job that this entire pitching staff did to win the World Series. Well, they, they, this pitching staff been amazing all year. The bullpen, my bullpen, been really, really good. You know, Flambert battled too on um, first couple of innings, but he settled down. Um, you know, we believe in each other. They, they, they trust me. They trust them, and uh, you know, I'm just super excited for the moment. Martin, thanks so much. Congratulations. Go enjoy it. Thank you. Back to you, Joe. Well, the Astros do it. A cautionary tale of 2019. They came back home with a 3-2 lead. They sealed the deal. They don't mess around. They don't let it get to a game seven. With a sixth inning where they score four runs right after Kyle Schwarber put the Phillies in front and inspired hope in Philadelphia that this could get to a seventh game. But they had the response immediately in support of Framber Valdez and in support of Dusty Baker. A champion for the first time. Back down to Ken Rosenthal. Thanks, Joe. Jordan Alvarez, that was the fourth time this series you faced Alvarado. How much of a difference did that make? Yeah, I think every single time I went up there a little bit anxious, I obviously we know he has a great sinker. This time what I did, I just tried to stay a little bit calm, select a good pitch to swing at, and that's, how I, that's what I did. Going around the bases, what was the feeling like? Yeah, uh, amazing. When I when I was running second base, I felt the whole stadium moving. I think it was just all the fans. Your parents were here tonight. How much does it mean to you, Jordan, that they were able to see this? No, mucho, mucho. Obviamente no estaba teniendo una buena serie mundial y la y la fe que ellos siempre me brindaron, que confiara, tuviera confianza, las cosas van a salir bien y salieron. Yeah, that, great, great. Um, obviously, I wasn't having a great series, but they always put all their faith in me, and thankfully, we were able to do this. Jordan, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Back to you. Kenny, this has already been a special run for him because for the first time he's been able to share it with his parents who until this August couldn't get to the United States from Cuba. Got here in August. They've been here since. They just watched their son win a World Series and play a central role in doing so with a legendary home run still sailing over the batter's eye. That pitch, that ball is going to keep sailing forever. Coming up, we've got the Willie Mays World Series Most Valuable Player Award presented by Chevrolet. And the Astros are champions for the second time in franchise history for the first time since 2017. We welcome you back in. Thanks for being with us for this World Series. Joe Davis, John Smoltz, and so many memorable moments to this fall class. Really, I, I can't think of, of storylines that were as great as they were here. Philadelphia, yeah. what an incredible journey. And then, of course, Houston gets to cap it off with all that they've been through. This really was a great World Series, and... Uh, Dusty Baker got his. Yeah, and his 25th year as a manager, Dusty Baker gets a ring for the first time. We're going to go down to the field. Kevin Burkhart, take it away. Here with Commissioner Rob Manfred. Minute Maid Park, can you hear me? Try one more time. Minute Maid Park, can you hear us? There we go. Well, how about a little louder for your World Series champion, Houston Astros? All right, let's hand out the trophy, right? We got the owner, Jim Crane of the Astros, James Click, the general manager. The manager, Dusty Baker, is here. And here we go, Commissioner. The Houston Astros had a great regular season, just completed an incredible postseason run. They give the fans here in Houston the very best that baseball has to offer. It's not my 
honor and pleasure to give the commissioner's trophy to Jim Crane, the owner of the 2022 World Series champion, Houston Astros. Jim, congratulations, and how sweet does the second one feel? Well, it's great, but Houston, we did it again. Without you, we're not here. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you. Just a couple quick words. Great fans, uh, great ops team, James group, Dusty's group, all the great players, and from the bottom job in this stadium to the top, Everyone contributed. We love you all. James, come on over. As the uh, architect of this whole unit, what is the most gratifying thing for you to see it come to this? Just to be on the stage with this team, with Dusty, with Jim, with all the players, to be in front of our fans here in Houston. Thank you. You did this. Thank you. Congratulations. Well, let's see. This morning, Dusty Baker had managed the most games ever without a World Series title. Not anymore. Not anymore. Now they quit talking about it. <laughs> Has it hit you yet? You got mocked in the dugout after it was over. You had to hold on to the fence so you didn't topple over. Yeah. Has it hit you yet, Dusty? Oh, it hit me all right. <laughs> it, it hit me through that ball. You're not hit over the, over the moon out there. That's when they hit me. What has been the most enjoyable thing about this whole run for you? Well, I... I now, that hasn't sunk in yet, to tell you the <laughs> truth. But, you know... How about the Mastos? <laughs> hey, this, the, this is the greatest, greatest bunch of guys. They told me in spring training that they were going to win it. Yes. Now, what's next? Uh, party. party. Yeah. <laughs> Dusty, enjoy it. Dusty Baker. Well, man, thank you. All right. We have uh, one more trophy to hand out. The Willie Mays Most Valuable Player presented by Chevrolet. Um, can we have Jeremy Pena? Right here. That's all yours. What is it like to win the world? I mean, this is what we dream about. Houston, we love y'all. Let's go. Jeremy, you're the second rookie ever to win MVP of the LCS and of the World Series. How did you do it? I mean, shout out to these guys. You know, these guys kept me within myself. You know, their preparation every single day. And uh, individual awards are cool and all, but that's the trophy we want right there. Put the camera on that right there. Let's go. Un saludo para mi gente latina. Lo queremos. What was your reaction? You were right in the middle of the rally when, as Dusty said, Jordan put that ball on the moon. What was your reaction right off the bat? I mean, our job was to get on base, pass it out to the next guy, and, you know, Jordan has been doing it all year. So, uh, you know, always trust the big man. You know, that was, that was impressive. Gold glove. ALCS MVP, World Series MVP, Jeremy Pena. Congrats. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, your World Series champion, Houston Astros.
Pena, the first rookie position player ever to win World Series MVP. After he wins American League Championship Series MVP. Every step of the way, this guy answered questions. He hit 400 in this World Series and a very deserving winner. Yeah, it's an incredible feeling to be this young and to have the rest of your career be marked by two MVP. The sky's the limit for this young man. What a year, what a season. Astros are world champs. Dusty Baker is a world champ. And we've got plenty more coverage coming up from Houston. Kevin Burkhardt and the boys recap game six. And these six games, Astros over the Phillies in 2022. Hasn't been in May. The confetti still floating in the air. And man, what a night. Frank Thomas, David Ortiz, Alex Rodriguez. And I see, uh, I see our special guest coming over right now. There is Dusty Baker. Gonna enjoy this every second of it. I tell you. That's the final chapter to the movie. <laughs> All right, we'll get Dusty seated here. <laughs> Time no see, Dusty. Congrats, yes, sir. my man. Hey, that's a good one. Hey, yes, sir. Come on, no. <laughs> hey, let me ask you a question. Yeah. At the game, what's next? What's next? <laughs> I said if I win one, I want to win two. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> what I'm doing, Frank? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Hey, man, I'm so happy. I was, I was just thinking about my my mom who passed in January and my dad. Hank Aaron last year and all the guys that helped mold and make me the man that I am. And uh, I'm so happy that actually it took this long because I would have been gone a long time ago. And then, you, you know, then you affect, affect the players' lives and their families. And that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah, you've right. been one of the best mentors, players, coach, players, managers this game has ever seen. I mean, and for me as a young African-American player, you've meant so much to us. You're a huge inspiration. I'm so happy tonight that you got this victory because I'm tired of hearing all those narratives. Yeah, yeah, I'm just tired of it. Tired of it's your moment. This is your night. This is your time. He doesn't do this. He doesn't do that. And all I heard about what I can't do, but you know, my mom and dad taught me perseverance. And yes. you got to persevere. You got to believe in yourself. And there's a lot of people around the country that were pulling for us. That's right. Especially yeah. people, yeah. yeah. people of color. Especially there are people of color everywhere I go. And people of non-color. So, hey, man, we are family. <laughs> yes, sir. That's right, That's right. That's right. Hey, Justin, you've yeah. been such a role model for Poppy, Big Herb, myself, and thousands if not millions of other people of color, of any color. But my question to you is, you were so close with the Nats, with the Cubs, with the Giants. Yeah. Did you feel the time would never come? How satisfying is this for you right now? Well, I didn't know if the time was going to come when I couldn't get a job. But I knew if I got a job, mm -hmm. the time is going to come. That's right. You know what I mean? And you keep, you keep, you keep, you keep uh, churning and you keep, keep hustling and you keep, you stay with it. Yeah. You know I, what I mean? I just and, remember uh, sitting with you at the steakhouse yeah, you know, that night. Some people get it in day one. Some yeah. people get it. You know, like I, I talked to Scat Man Brothers years ago. Yeah. yeah. You used to be on Chico and the Man. And I asked Scat, I said, hey, man, how are you still doing this? He said, Dusty, 50, and he was old then. He said, 15 years a pleasure is worth the 60 years of struggle and trying to get here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So Absolutely. That, yeah, and I was like, you know, I've always stuck in my mind. Dusty, I, I, I mentioned this on the podium a moment ago, but if you can look at her, I just want to, if you look at the monitor, take us through this moment for you. <laughs> what are you feeling right about there? Well, actually, I'm feeling that they're swarming all over me. I, it, it was all my coaches and, the, and all the, you know, clubhouse people and stuff. They were as happy for me as I was. And, but it was about us. I kept seeing those signs like do it for Dusty and the players that say, hey, man, we're going to do this for you. Framber told me this before the game. He told me this before the series even started, before the playoffs even started. Wow. And I'm like, hey, man, that's that's cool and everything, but let's do it for us. And let's do it for the city of Houston and do it for hopefully all this stuff that we've been going through the last three years. Hopefully it's over. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah you got to let it You got to let it ride. You know what I mean? Because these guys are some good ball players. Yes. Great ball players. You definitely do. Let me ask you a question, Dusty. Do you have a guy like Pena 
new kid coming in, trying to figure it out. All of a sudden, he left everything on that field. World Series MVP. I mean, what kind of type of blessing is that for you? Well, you know, that that's great because I think about my own son to be in that situation. And I think about the guys on the taxi squad because Pena was on the taxi squad last year at this time. So I urge them all. You don't know you could be next year's Pena yes, because you don't know how close to stardom that you are. All you need is the opportunity. You got to make the best of the opportunity. And I got to commend Pena's mom and dad, Ronnie Mall and his mother, because they did a heck of a job raising a fine young man. On that key. Where's the party tonight? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, baby. First we go Come on, baby. Party. Oh, Pop, you love the party. Oh, you know, baby. You really know. <laughs> so happy for you, Dusty. Thank you, bro. So I love you, man. You, man. I'm so I glad you put all man. that stuff to bed. Right, You're brother. a great man, Dusty. Thank you, you Thank you so much. Dusty, congrats, congrats, congrats to you. Right. Enjoy every second. Really. Right. Justin Verlander, we're going to get him in here now. Bring Justin on in here. Here he comes. What's up, JV? <laughs> How are you? Great. All right, all right. Wonderful. Oh, I bet. I mean, your quite honestly, is ready I think to never go. better. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? How are you guys? Congratulations, you, gentlemen. You deserve it, buddy. I appreciate it. Very Thank nice. You. JV, you've done it all. We've talked about it all month long in October. What an incredible career you've had. And this is the best version of Justin Verlander. How satisfying was that game yesterday? And without it, you don't have tonight. You know, I would have rather been you know, a little bit of an easier game. But, um, you know, sometimes the toughest games are the ones that you come out of feeling the best. Um, it, was a, it was a difficult game. Um, you know, these guys, they're hot. They have a great lineup. And, and they didn't make anything easy on us. Um, but to come out and get the monkey off my back and uh, you know after the game I told Dusty you know I finally exercised my demons we got one more and uh, that's to, that's to get you a championship and thankfully we were able to pull it off well you both exercised those demons yeah. <laughs> big World Series championship couple of months be looking at your next Cy Young award <laughs> have you thought about that yet um, I'm gonna be lying if it didn't <laughs> pop in my mind um, <laughs> congratulations you know man. I appreciate it. I, you can't say well no, 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 you don't say congratulations yet I, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I hope it happens, but I mean, you guys know that you guys have been in the grind. How hard it is, rehab especially, is never easy. And I don't know if I could have. I don't. I, I definitely couldn't have written a better story than, than to be here right now. Justy, let me tell you something, brother. I know you are free agent after this season. <laughs> I know you are 39. But guess what's going to happen with you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a baptized you pay the man! Where the money at? You had the money, what happened? Give me my money! money. Hey, it's real money! It's money. money. <laughs> Don't take it to the store! Don't take it to the store! <laughs> you're scaring his daughter! <laughs> she's alright. Jesse, your daughter you is you adorable. I mean, she's just it. smiling for the camera. Like she's well, loving every second I mean, of this been, too. She's been a part of this ride from the beginning. Um, really and truly such a blessing. Uh, when I when I did, when I knew I needed rehab. It was one of those things that, you know, I, I, I knew I'd never get, I hadn't had a summer off since I was five years old, you know, and, and to have this little girl here at home and get to come back to her every single day uh, and just have her be part of this journey um, really puts things in perspective. Um, and, and I think it's helped me be more present and, uh, man, just, uh, I, it's quite overwhelming, to be honest. What was your immediate reaction when Jordan hit that ball out of the yard? I mean, that thing was a oh. rocket. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's rare that you see one hit the center like that. And you just absolutely know it's gone. I mean, the emotions are so high. I mean, you're on the edge of your seat. Obviously, you know, they threw a punch, and we did what we've done all year. You know, we came right back and threw a haymaker. Um, and, you know, Jordan did it. Uh, but, but top to bottom, I think you saw in this series particularly how many different ways we can win a ball game, from pitching to defense to base running to slugging. Whatever we need to do to win, we're able to do it. Hey, JV, look at the monitor right here. We're going to show you <laughs> you celebrating with, with your family. Tell me what's going through your mind right now. We're going to pop it up here in a matter of minute. Uh, just a lot of emotion, man. Just a lot of, you know, just looking back and a lot of the hard work. And like I said, I don't, you know, if I, I, 
I couldn't have written this myself. You know, you dream of these moments. You don't know if they're ever going to really be here, but. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Yeah. Yeah. This is my crew. Here. This is my crew. Hey, congrats, congrats. These two, congrats. These two got me congrats. through it. I did an A plus cheering. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like for you, Kay? I mean, this whole Justin was just talking about the rehab and spending family time and how great that was. So what's this all been like for you? Um, it's such an incredible experience. I mean, having Justin home and being able to be together as a family is so amazing. And then to go to the exact extreme and be here at the World Series and then win is just so exciting and so worth it. We miss him every time. I had a question for you. You want him to retire or play one more year? <laughs> one more, Poppy. One more. No way. I you know. Wow. Poppy He's got a pistol. He's 45. What's going on? No, no, no. I love watching my husband do it. I'm a journalist. That is the Did you see how he pissed this year? Are you crazy? They've been so supportive. Yeah, and to see him do what he loves is to see him do his craft. He's such an artist out there. When he's pitching, it's truly so creative. It's such an art. And we are so honored to all right, be part of it. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go. There we go. Hey, go we enjoy it, Justin. Congrats. Congrats, Congrats to all of you. Congrats. That's Congratulations awesome. and hell of a comeback here. All right. Bye -bye. Well, that's a good start. Justin Baker, hey. Justin Verlander, the Houston Astros. Our World Series champions again. Yes. Second time in the last six years. We'll hear from Rob Thompson of the Phillies and more. Post game continues on Fox. <laughs> Emotional night for the champions. The Houston Astros do it in game six. Got a great pitching performance again from Robert Valdez. Their bullpen lights out. And Jordan Alvarez with a monstrous three run home run. Ryan Presley got the big old champagne bottle. He's ready to go. The Astros bullpen, one of the best performances in postseason history. And we welcome you back to Minute Maid Park. It's still loud in here, and we're a long time since that game ended. But it's a party here in H-Town tonight as they react to Dusty Baker walking behind the camera now, too. Meanwhile, for the Phillies, look, an unbelievable year. They get in the postseason as a final spot in the playoffs and make it all the way to the World Series. Obviously, you never want to have it end like this. But Rob Thompson, gracious enough to give Tom Verducci some time. Thanks, Kevin. Rob, disappointing defeat, obviously. What did you tell your club? Uh, just the fact that I'm really proud of them. I really am. These guys played, came to play every day. They played hard. They worked hard. They were a great team. They really were. They stuck together, played hard together. Uh, I just love every one of them. It may be too soon, but looking back on it, is there a point where you thought maybe the series turned? Yeah, maybe on Schwarber's home run, you know, today. Uh, if, if that's what you're asking me. Um, but then we went, got into the uh, sixth inning, and, and Will's, we had first and third, and uh, Will still had his good stuff. I just felt like Alvarado was the best matchup there. Yeah, you said coming into this series, you liked Alvarado on Alvarez. We saw it four times. What happened in that one sequence today? Yeah, he just got behind, and then you know, he threw a 99 mile an hour fastball, and Alvarez just beat him to the spot. and. Uh, that's what good hitters do sometimes, and you just got to tip your cap to them. But uh, you know, it was great. It was a really good ball game, nonetheless. Thanks so much. Congratulations. It was a great series. Disappointing loss, I know, but thank you. Thank you. Back to you, KB. All right, Tom. Rob, very uh, great of him to give time and gracious in that interview, as always. Frank, you know, it, it was a heck of a run for them. I mean, I mean these last two games were epic games. It could have gone either way. It, it, you know, they, they had a great season. You can just tell Rob Thompson is a great man. He's very grateful for this opportunity this year to lead these men, these men to the World Series. That team is a special team. If they can keep that core together, you never know. They could be back here next year. They're very, very talented. They had a lot of fight, and they played their butts off. But someone had to lose. We all knew what Houston had in that bullpen, on that mound, and that's why they won the world championship. I mean, guys, look, we all know that once you get to this point of the season, all you're thinking about is taking the trophy home. But I'll tell you what, it was a hell of a run for the Philadelphia Philly. I mean, if you go back to May, you go back to June, and you look at where they were, and now all of a sudden they play in the World Series, that's a big step. That's a giant step. And it's a good sign for the Philadelphia Philly for the next year. They know they got so close. They need to get a couple of pieces to complete and come back and fight next year and win it all. I, I agree with both of you. I think the, the Phillies will be, be back. They have a world-class owner in John Middleton, Alster and Dombrowski, and a great man, Rob Thompson, so graciously uh, just had a tremendous second half in postseason. 
Someone has to win, somebody has to lose. But to me, the biggest winner, Kevin, is Major League Baseball. What an incredible month for baseball. Some great themes coming back, starting pitching, contact, defense, the Philly fan base, the Astro fan base, and everything else. I think baseball is the best I've seen it in over 10 years, fellas. Well, fellas, it's uh, it's always a pleasure being with you. Another postseason, uh, yes. another postseason wrapped up. What a pleasure! What a great month it Love was. Love you, bro. And uh, Poppy, I'll pick you up on Monday to go see Ricky Balboa. <laughs> Look forward to it. Jose Altuve has got the trophy walking around, and the Astros are world champs one more time. Champagne dreams tonight in Houston, and we will say goodnight. For those of you, most of you around the country, it's your late local news is next, except on the West Coast. The Astros, World Series champs. I'll see you when I see you.